What's happening, everybody? On episode 403, CB and Alyssa help me discuss what games we've purchased more than once and why exactly we do that. In news, the original Overwatch will be officially unplayable in October once the sequel releases, and also Atari may be bringing back a sequel to a beloved game from back in the day. New games we played this week include Sonic Origins, Skeleton Crew, Milky Way Prince, The Vampire Star, and Zorro the Chronicles. This is The Gaming Outsider. Greetings, programs, and welcome to episode 403 of The Gaming Outsider, a video game podcast with a focus on our incredible community. It is Tuesday, June 28th. I'm your host, Scott Clark, and joining me are my friends, Chris Berensmeyer. What's up? Hey, man. How's it going? I'm doing all right. And also joining us, Miss Alyssa White. Alyssa, how are you? I'm okay. How are you doing, Scott? I am doing quite well, Alyssa. I am kind of bummed that you don't live in town because you missed out this past week. I'm bummed too. I don't get to see you guys. I know, but you missed out on something even cooler because uh, we actually uh, had a g- full-on just gaming day with me, CB, and listener Brian Li- Brian Williams. That's a different podcast. Brian Regals, uh, who came down from uh, Milwaukee to hang out with us for the day. We literally set up a station in my, my basement with three different TVs, so we each had our own TV, and we played online, which is even funnier. <laughs> We played like Ninja Turtles <laughs> online. We played Evil Dead, uh, and just the entire day sat in the basement, and played games. I haven't done that in a long time. I felt like a kid again. I had this was uh, so fun. I had snacks so I could be a good host. Yeah, right? yeah he wasn't. He wasn't a bad host this time. <laughs> oh, did he not provide snacks before? I, I one time I didn't, and I got <laughs> he I got shoved out by his wife, and it was <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, it was pretty funny. No, I had like. I had bread and jam and chips and soda and all this good stuff. It was, yeah. it was a good time. He's like, I brought snacks. Here's some bread. Here's some water. <laughs> Stupid <really> prisoners. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of fun, though. What, we, like, what else did we play besides... Uh, I, I finished Rogue Legacy 2. I played some Dead Cells. Played some Dead Cells. Brian played some Assassin's Creed Origins, I believe. Yeah. Um, by the way, if you have not met him... Brian is like legit one of the nicest guys that could probably kick your ass. I've never <laughs> met him, so he just uh he actually like the weekend before passed his sixth degree black belt assessment. Oh wow or, or whatever it is. So he is the real deal. Like if you were gonna go any further, you would uh have to go to Korea or something like that to be able to get a seventh degree. So um but we had a really, really great time. So shout out to Brian. Thank you so much for stopping down and playing games with us. It was a lot of fun. CB, you want to tell everybody about our new project? Oh, man. So uh, <laughs> we, we got ourselves in over our heads, folks. A little bit, uh, yeah. We, we uh, decided to help clear out an old game store that Scott and uh, Nate used to work at. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's a mountain, folks. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah, it's a little bit. I think we bit off a little more than we can chew. I feel like we're going to be working on this for the next six months. I, like, I hope bit it's a little bit. Six months. I hope it's, yeah, it's probably closer to nine or twelve. Let's put it this way, folks. I took home a couple boxes today, and I managed to get through one. Yeah. So and if anybody needs was... any old like PS One memory cards, oh no, no, or... these are PS Two. I I currently PS2. have two hundred and forty PS Two memory cards <laughs> in my possession. <laughs> What's going to be funny is when you go through to test those and just see what old save data. Oh, is that's right. I'm actually like super excited because there's always going to be like that really obscure game. You're like. What? I, I didn't even know people played this. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be fun. Uh, so yeah, we've got, we've got a lot of work ahead of us to do that, but uh, hopefully we can find something something cool. But we also got to give a shout out. All your accessory needs. Yeah, exactly. Like, seriously, if anybody needs, I don't know, what are there, like 45 Guitar Hero guitars and drum kits? Yeah, Guitar Hero <laughs> guitars, drums, keytars. Uh, yeah, or if anybody needs any like Xbox 360 manuals or slip sleeves, please let us know. We've got Plenty that we're trying to help them unload. So, uh, also, I got to give a shout out to another listener, Mr. Scott Bores, who uh, was going to visit some family near Chicago and uh, asked if we could uh, meet up for lunch while he was in town. So, I, I took him, uh, we went out to a, actually, he purchased me lunch, which was really, really nice. I was not expecting that. Um, but I got to meet him and his wife and their son, and it was a lot of fun. And CB, you totally missed out. I know. Yeah. Sometimes I have to go to work. Sometimes you do. Sometimes when yeah. you're not building Legos, you got to work. Leave me alone. Uh, <laughs> uh, also, one more quick shout out. Got We had our May and June game giveaway. 
Uh, we gave away four games, one big one, and then three indie titles. Uh, Tim Thane won our copy of Mario Strikers Battle League. Andrew Jack won a copy of Blast Brigade. Actually, I think he opted for a uh, for a, a gift card instead. Uh, Aaron Hughes II won a copy of Rogue Legacy 2 on Steam. And let me tell you, he was so excited to win that game. He was he was very, very happy. He says he never wins anything. Aww. And uh, Joel Selinski won a copy of Rise of the Third Power, which he is playing already, and he says that he absolutely loves. He says, if you like Octopath Traveler, you have to play Rise of the Third Power. So anyway, let's go ahead and talk about some uh, games that we've been catching up on. CB, let's start with you. Well, uh, I'm still plugging away at Stardew Valley. I just entered year two. So, uh, how long is that in in real? I was going to ask. Uh, I've probably got like close to twenty hours in this playthrough already. This playthrough, yeah. Good lord! All right, because yeah, your son deleted your other one, yep. right? I was on year five, dude. Your son deletes your saves <laughs> a lot. A lot. <laughs> This is why he got his own Switch, so that can't happen again. There you go. That's a way to do it. Just don't game uh, share with them or <laughs> like, no who knows what'll happen. No kidding. Um, <laughs> oh, earlier today, he's like, hey, Dad, can I play Fallout, uh, Fallout New Vegas? And I'm like, no, not on my console. You cannot. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you're not going to ruin that save file. <laughs> Did you get him his own game gamer tag yet? No. <laughs> I just locked him out of certain games. Like sometimes I get really excited when I'm online playing a game, and all of a sudden I see CB's name pop up that he logs on. I'm like, "Oh, CB, maybe he'll want to play something." Oh, I don't know. It's probably his kid. <laughs> He's like, "It's like, oh, Minecraft." Nope, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Um, but no, uh, it, it was it was a busy week. So other other than getting together with you, I mean, we played some Evil Dead, which I gladly trolled the crap out of Scott. Well, yeah, because well. Tell them about the glitch we had. Okay, like the so very first match. <laughs> very first match. We're like less than five minutes into the match, and uh, Brian Regal somehow uh, warped into the floor. <laughs> it was like inside a box or something, yeah. wasn't he? So he was just stuck there. So I came in because I, I got to play the demon. Mm -hmm. So um, I just came over and killed him real quick. And then, oh, no. <laughs> uh, proceeded to follow Scott around the map. <laughs> No, 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 not, it wasn't, it was stalk Scott around the map. Because oh, I no, have I just, no idea what I'm doing in this game. I'm just trying well, to figure this I'm, game I'm out. I'm standing right next to him the whole time. Like, we're sitting next to each other. Like, he's on the couch, I'm on the chair next to him. I'm like, oh, I see you, Scott. <laughs> I can smell you. <laughs> and proceeded to just keep activating traps around him. So he'd be like, oh, look, I'm doing, nope, there's another demon. Crap. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm walking around and this tree just comes to life and tries to kill like, me. What is that? the tree it was, it was great the the funnier part was when we actually started up a real game where brian didn't clip into a, a box <laughs> um we were playing with some random dude that was like level 50 or something like that and i felt so sorry for this guy because i'm just following him just to try to keep up because i have no idea and we basically became useless to him because number one we aren't very good at the game and number two we're not nearly a high level and uh i, I remember specifically the point where he just gave up because he because yeah we, we all died there. and then we, we just started watching him and then he just like he looks around in the game he tried for a, he tried for a while and then he just stood there he's like <laughs> i hate you guys yeah pretty much <laughs> so, so we, was, we, we probably didn't get a good review so that was that was pretty entertaining uh and then we played uh i played some team uh teenage mutant ninja turtle shredder's revenge was that the that wasn't the first time you played it right yeah it was it was? Okay. Yeah. And uh, I legitimately enjoyed it. it. It really does feel like the old arcade game. Yeah. I love that. I played, we played through, that would have been my second time. I played through as Casey Jones. Yeah. Which I did not like Casey Jones. He's way too slow. Yeah, you didn't like him. I, I liked playing as Michelangelo. I had a blast. I bet you. I bet you did. I still got to play through Splinter, April. Donatello, Michelangelo, and Raphael. So I've got five more playthroughs. I want to play through it as each character. I wouldn't want to play as Megan Fox. Well, I don't think it's not Megan Fox's April. I know, but still. <laughs> that character has been permanently tarnished by that person. Uh, maybe. Alyssa, have you played it yet? I have not, no. You really should come play with us. It is, it is 
super fun. I'll get the bravery one day. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Alyssa? You been playing anything fun? I've just been playing Tiny Tina's Wonderlands because I am pretty much addicted to it right now. Oh uh, yeah. Are you playing on an Xbox? I am. Yeah. We'll have to we'll have to hop in and because I can play that with you. We'll I'm not play... very far in. I'm I'm just now level twelve or thirteen. Can't remember. I... You're probably further ahead than I am. I, this is a game I only play with played with my student. So as long as we can keep our language down, we could all play together. Oh, yeah. He would get a kick out of that. Um, does the humor continue? The same style of humor? Oh, yeah. I'm still enjoying the humor. And I came across my first tough boss fight. Uh-huh. Fight. Fight. <laughs> uh, with the Banshee. Uh, did, have you ever fought the Banshee? Or... In the game, I fought yet? a boss, but I don't remember what it was. It was a while ago. She killed me four times before I. Could... She has a certain rhythm you have to decipher, and I didn't figure that out until the third time. Gotcha. And the fourth time, well, no, it was the fifth time I finally defeated her, and she's just a bullet sponge. Mm -hmm. I think I spent two or three hours trying to take her down. My game is a lot more fun when you have more people that can help you revive and. And, you know, help whittle that down a little bit, too, so. I wish my little mushroom buddy could help me, but no. <laughs> he helps he, me once in a while, but he, never. He not just like goes around and he farts on people. That's all he does for me. That sounds like a blast. Uh... <laughs> uh, but yeah, but... I, I defeated the Tooth Fairy, and I've done other quests. Have you passed the Cheeto? I have passed the Cheeto. Okay. I, I think that was one of the last things I did was pass the cheese buff. Got that, got that removed. So yeah, we'll have to hop on and play together sometime. That'd be, that'd be fun. Oh yeah, it would be. Yeah. And uh, I'll introduce you to Bryce. He's uh he likes to teach me how to go through that. Okay. Game. It's, pretty, it's pretty fun. So maybe he can teach me some stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I, uh, as for me, I finished, I mentioned it already, but I finished rogue legacy Two. That game is still consistently awesome. Uh, there is a stupid amount of content in that game. Even after you beat it, there is just so much to do. It's not a new game plus per se. They do this deal where you get to start these new quote unquote threads or something like that, where you can up the difficulty or change all these uh, environmental type things and uh, get some added challenge. And what what was the number C? Because you asked me to look at the achievements. Because I beat the game, I probably played it for forty, fifty hours. How many achievements did I have? You had one hundred and seventy of a thousand. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> so there's plenty more to do, and most of them are hidden. Like most of them are hidden achievements, which I I, I hate hidden achievements. There's a thousand achievements. Well, a thousand oh, achievement points. A th achievement points. Oh, okay. I was about to yeah, say yeah. that's a lot of achievements. <laughs> well, like one of the stat. achievements. Yeah. They have that thing now where you can look at the hidden achievements. Oh, I know. Yeah. Uh, one of the achievements is 200 points, and it's just to get all the other achievements. It's basically like a platinum trophy, but not all games do that. So, uh, Also, I, play, I picked up on sale because uh, Xbox had a pretty big sale this past week. I picked up a game that uh, our producer Nate recommended a long time ago, and I never picked it up, called Valferis which if you uh, remember is kind of like a, it, it looks on the surface like it's going to be a gear gated game, but it's more like Contra. It just is a very linear experience, 16 bit, but it's metal themed. Every time you pick up a weapon, your character faces the screen and just bangs his head. Um, the, it's difficult, but fair. Um, and and the, it's, just, it's just really, really good. And I, actually it was a double pack with Slain, which I haven't I haven't tried that one yet, but um, I think it was like eight bucks for both of those games, and so far I am very very happy with Valferis. Uh, also picked up the Mega Man Legacy Mega Man X Legacy Collection Two, Volume Two, and started on Mega Man X Five. If you guys remember, I played through the first four in Volume One. I actually got all the achievements for that because I'm a big Mega Man X nerd. Uh, I've heard that not all of the X games are good in the second half, but so far, X5 is very similar to the other Mega Man X games, so I'll have to report back on the others. Um, and lastly, can you tell them on summer break? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, our, my buddy Jeff over at Nindy Nation recommended a game called Bleed. Actually, he recommended Bleed 2, 
Um, and but they were each like fifteen bucks a piece, but they had a combo where if you got both of them, it was like four fifty. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I'll just go ahead and get the other one and pay ten bucks less. So, and I oh, happened yeah. to have enough gold points in my Nintendo account that I didn't have to pay a dime for it. So it was basically free. Um, CB, I think you might like this one. This is a platformer that controls like a twin stick shooter. Like you actually jump with the, like a, one of the trigger buttons instead, or one of the bumpers, and you're actually aiming. You don't have a fire button. You just aim with the right stick whatever direction you want to go. That's weird. It's weird. It takes a minute to get used to, but actually... Blast Brigade contro- controlled that way too, kind of, if you think about it. Although it had a trigger button, I think so. Um, I haven't played Bleed 2 yet, but he said to try out Bleed 1 first. And it's very fast, very, it's almost like, uh, it, it's linear, going from point A to point B. You have a health bar and a boss at the end. Uh, it's very a lot of pattern memorization, but at some points it feels a little bit like a shmup, which I think you would like. It's not a bullet hell shmup. But uh, I think you'd, check, you'd like it, CB, and I'm looking forward to seeing what Bleed 2 yeah, has to offer. I'll check it out. So there you have it. Anyway, those are the games we've been catching up on. Let's go ahead and jump into the week's news. All right, first things first. I didn't even realize this until I hopped onto Nintendo Switch Online the other day, but Pokemon Snap is now available on Nintendo Switch Online on N64. Uh, I played that game once, but I know you guys are all Pokemon freaks. Thought you might be excited about that one. Uh, also, this week we learned that the original Overwatch will be unplayable this October. Uh, this past week was the 50th anniversary of Atari. That's pretty huge news. We also got our uh, a Nintendo Partner Direct. That actually was this morning as of this recording. And lastly, Xbox outsold the PS5 in Japan last week. So interesting things going on. Alyssa, what is most interesting to you from this list? I just think it's interesting that the Xbox outsold the PS5 in Japan. It not because, just outsold yeah. the PS5, but in Japan. Yeah, uh, Japan, it, Xbox has never been a big entity in Japan until now. Not, not just outsold it, sold double the amount. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Like, this is for the week of June 13th to actually, June, June 19th. Actually, correction, uh, ex- almost triple the amount. It is close to triple. Yeah, the Xbox Series X and S sold 6,695 6, units, whereas the PS5, both physical and digital, sold 2,371. Now, there is a little bit of an asterisk associated with that because... Of course. You know, there's a pretty big supply shortage in Japan uh, for PS5. So this is more than likely a temporary thing and, uh, you know... Just to give you guys perspective, the week prior to this, uh, PS5 sold around 12,400 units, while the Xbox only sold just over 6,200 units. So, yeah, PlayStation is still huge. And and then, just to give even more further clarification, the PS5 in Japan, in its lifetime, has sold 1.69 million units, whereas the Xbox X and Series X, or Series X and Series S, has only sold 232,000 units. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. PS5 but, is still definitely winning. Oh, yeah, winning. definitely. Oh, actually, no. You know who's winning is Nintendo, with uh, selling almost 25 million units of the Nintendo Switch in Japan so far. Yeah. That's huge. It's very but, huge. Yeah, the one thing I do take away from this, though, is Xbox's numbers have been... Consistent. consistent right mm-hmm. like, i have noticed that uh the ps5s have been noticeably more available this past week i don't know if you guys uh follow that at all but i've got a buddy that has been desperately looking for a ps5 for about a year now and i've been trying to help him track down one and i actually was able to track him down one this past week and i keep getting more e- more twitter notifications that they are available so if you guys you know follow the right people on twitter you you can uh you might get a little bit more lucky nowadays. You may have to get it bundled with Horizon Forbidden West, but yeah, I'm I'm still amazed though because a lot of people still are coming down to the wire saying, "Do I buy the PS5 or the Xbox?" And uh, I know there's at least four people that I work with who had the opportunity to buy one or the other, 
Yep. And they've all chosen the Xbox just because of what's available to them through like Game Pass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, I, do I do I go for the console that has three exclusives or the console where I'm basically getting free stuff every month? Mm-hmm. I actually have another friend that is uh, in the market to get one as well. And I sold them on uh, getting the, the Series S and saving some money to put towards Game Pass. And I found out that GameStop is actually doing that program where you can pay like, was it like 25 bucks a month for 24 months? Yep. And I did the math, and it's actually like 60 bucks cheaper to do that than it is to, you know, buy it right outright. So, like, why wouldn't you do that? I mean, you got a bill, but. Like, in my opinion, it's still the best deal in gaming. Oh, yeah. Other it's other than PC. Deal. So, I would you say, P- Alyssa? I just said, yeah, it's a fantastic deal. It, it's It's really good. Even. Like, seriously, I, if I didn't have this show each week i i think i would just play go through the library of the game pass and just keep myself busy there i really know you couldn't put your switch down well i mean in, in terms of my tv gaming you know my switch is for when i'm like on a trip or i'm laying in bed or something like that you know what i mean yeah i don't play switch on my tv a whole lot yeah i don't either i actually i think i've I only docked either. it once What about you, CB? Any of these uh, stories interest you? There's only one. Okay. I think I knew. Happy birthday, Atari. Yep, that was the one. Doesn't that make you feel super old? It does, but it's 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 the Atari man. Yeah, like it's what I grew up on. For some of you youngins, back before we had even like Nintendo and Super Nintendo and all that, and Genesis. That one's for you, Kevin. Uh, we had a little console called, well, at least I had it, an Atari 2600. Oh, that's not even the beginning. Oh, I know, I know. Because I had an Atari 400. Did you really? Wow. Yeah. Anyway, uh, these games had a joystick with one button, and that were all the controls that, that game had. That's it. You had to use this thing called your imagination. Oh, you sure <laughs> did. Because little little moving blocks on a screen can be interpreted as anything. Oh man, I I actually put a post on our social media about this where I said, you know, which were your favorite box arts from uh, from the Atari generation? Because man, I used to sit and stare at those box arts and imagine I was doing what was going on in that art when I was playing oh, the yeah. game. Oh, well, listen, do you have any? Do, have you ever looked at the box art of Atari games? I've seen that's, them that's like in magazines and um and on. Social media, mm-hmm. but I've never seen one in person. I have played an Atari twenty six hundred, but I haven't seen a the case for a game. Okay, so you know what the graphics look like in an Atari twenty six hundred, right? Very oh, large yeah. blocks, right? Very jagged, mm-hmm. but the box art for Atari games were epically beautiful. They just look well because they were all hand drawn. Yeah, everything was hand drawn. Like like I would. I would almost want to get like posters of these and just have them on my wall. They look really cool. Uh, like, it, and they look nothing like the game, but it was. I wonder if those games would have sold. I wonder if that would have, you know, if they didn't have that box art on there. I feel like box oh, no, art they was a much bigger anything. deal back then. But uh, anyway, because June that's t- why some of the, the consoles, the other consoles didn't sell that well, was because they had very generic box art. Mm hmm. So I, we were looking at actually there was some box art at the uh, at the store that we were at today when we were sorting through that and some of those didn't even have screenshots of the game on the back of the box. Could you imagine going to GameStop and picking up a game now and there not being anything on the back in terms of what the game actually looks like? It's weird. Just being sold yeah. purely on the box art. That'd be weird. Anyway, uh, yes, yeah, CB is correct. As of yesterday, which uh, today is the twenty eighth. Yesterday was the 27th, is the anniversary of one of the oldest video game companies. And they unveiled a new logo to commemorate the occasion, which is pretty reminiscent of the retro design of the original location where the, where, uh, the headquarters were. The logo is called Borregas. Am I pronouncing yep. that correct, CB? Which is the name of the street where you could find the headquarters. And apparently, according to the article I read, a sequel to Yar's Revenge is also in the works. 
uh, and it was confirmed by um, Harold Scott Warshaw, uh-huh. uh, one of the original designers. Uh, yeah, there's there's a new sequel coming for Years Revenge, which was one of the bigger sellers on the Atari 2600. So I'm, I'm actually really excited about that. Did did you get a chance to look at the new logo? I did, yeah. Very green. So, yeah, it, it's very green. I haven't mm-hmm. seen it. I need to look it up. So they, they took the original Atari um, logo with the three lines. The thing from Blade Runner. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, but that's just white with a black background, mm-hmm. and then below it is a 50 that's like two different shades of green, and it's slightly translucent. It's almost like a Venn diagram of the five and the zero. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really nice design. I mean, to be honest, like, I've always wanted to get a tattoo, and uh, the Atari logo has always been one of the ones that I'm like, yeah. I, I, you don't have any tattoos? Not a one. Mm. I, am, I, am, I am fresh canvas. <laughs> Same here. I, I cannot a... say the same. Zach and I are the tattooed two of the group. I just, well, I just don't know if I could think of anything I would want on me forever. I see. The problem is, I actually have two full sleeves drawn up. I just don't know who I trust to do them. I got a guy. I'll hook you up. We'll talk later. All right. I, <laughs> as long as it's not in a basement. <laughs> no, it's not in a basement. It's an actual place in town. But um, uh, listener friend of ours had his coheed and cambria tattoos done at this place oh, I, and... I know who you're talking about oh yeah you know who i'm talking about hey, i know him too i forgot you know yeah that's right we know the <laughs> same guy but uh anyway uh we got to talk about the nintendo direct or uh, i don't even know if you call it nintendo direct it was a nintendo partner direct mm-hmm. where it basically said it was going to be third party games uh i'm not going to read through the entire list i'm going to talk about a couple things that stood out to me uh, the big one for me was Return to Monkey Island. We finally saw some gameplay, and I did not know that game was coming to Switch. I just assumed that was going to be a PC release. So I'm very excited that uh, Return to Monkey Island is coming to... There's there's a few on this list that I'm surprised are coming to Switch. Such as? No Man's Sky. I thought we knew that already. I thought that was... I know, but I'm, I'm like every time I see it, I'm still just baffled. Cause yeah, that because that game is... Huge. It is huge. Yeah. Uh, Alyssa, anything on this list stand out to you? Okay, so I don't know if it appeals to many people, but Disney Dream Live Valley just looks so darn cute. Mm, you and I, same wavelength. You can I, take I, selfies I, with people. Yeah. <laughs> like Urs- they showed Ursula in the trailer, but it it just looks like Disney, but Animal Crossing. Yeah. Or. <laughs> It it seems Some like kind an, of combo. It looks like they took Disneyland Adventures and, and added and you leave that game alone. I still <laughs> like that game. It was fun. Uh-huh. <laughs> but yeah, like it, it 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 gives me that like Disneyland Adventures vibe, but with world building. Yeah. And just oh yeah, where you could characters. actually like position the castles and stuff like that. Yeah, that was yeah. Looked, looked really so. cute. There's one other important game on this list. I think it's going to be the same one I was going to mention. Is it? Is it Portal Companion? Oh, I wasn't going to be the one. Oh, but I I loved when during that trailer when Glados is like, I wanted to name this the Why Do You Keep Killing Me Collection. Yeah, <laughs> they had to get like re-record that, right? Like, so they, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, she she still does voice work for. Glados, because like every now and then, like Glados will pop up in random things. Oh yeah, but yeah, I really want to play this. I, I mean, I, you own the games. I don't care. I still <laughs> want more. There's no added bonus except being able to play a Portal. Blade. Don't care. All right, All I right. can play Portal on the go. Uh, the one that I was going to say is Live Alive, which is coming out July twenty second. That thing looks so cool to me. It does. It's the 16-bit, but with HD graphics, HD 16-bit. And I know that sounds kind of silly to say, but this thing, even I was watching it on my 4K TV, looks gorgeous. It just, it just looks super st- stunning. Uh, I actually watched some of the Treehouse stuff afterwards where they were actually playing. We got to see like 40 minutes of gameplay from it. Uh, I didn't watch the whole thing, but I watched the Wild West segment. 
and uh, I think there's like a there, there's just like it's one of those games where you jump around in different timelines of different eras, and um, apparently you can actually play the demo right now. There's like three different chapters that you can play. One called Imperial China, one called Twilight of Edo Japan, and one called The Distant Future. Um, and when we saw the recording, it was later today, but it is actually available right now. And then apparently your save carries over too, mm. which is good. Um, real quickly, did you see the the trailer for Blanc? And um, I did. Th- uh, there was one other one. It was Blanc, and it was like another hand drawn one. Uh, let's see. Was it? Oh, no, no, it was. Um, I'm thinking Blanc and uh, Lorelai and the la- the laser eyes. Okay. Yeah. I want to play both of those because that Blanc game looks super adorable. It looks gorgeous. I am afraid something will happen to one of them. So I'm going to hold off obvious. until other people. Okay, I'm not playing it then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, I can't handle it. My heart's too tender. I can't yeah. handle that. <laughs> well, I'd be mean, like, the, uh, the super cute animals. Like, we're going to try this black and white story. I'm like, one of them's going to die. I know. <laughs> I can't. My poor heart sad. can't handle it. <laughs> Did you, I thought, did you play, I, just, uh, I I loved how like at the end, the two of them kind of like wrapped themselves around each other in like a cuddle and turned into the sea and the word block. It was so cute. Yeah, it looks very very cute. <laughs> did Did you play or either one of the Ori games, Alyssa? I have not. <laughs> Tell you what, don't do I, don't don't My don't, don't play face. Don't I, don't I play that tell, because the second one to. is going to make you cry. I don't want to cry. I. I shed a tear. Like, I actually texted Scott, and I was like, the emotion in this game, bro, is super high. Yeah. And there's no dialogue in that entire game. There's not any, yeah. nobody talks to anybody. It's all just, like, verbal cues and, and body language. And, yeah. And the music. And the music. Oh, that's another soundtrack that I bust out every yeah. once in a while to have in the background. It's really good. Uh, I was it surprised, is. or was I surprised, that the Persona games are coming to Switch as well? I mean, they kind of seem like they'd be good games for the Switch. Yeah. yeah. yeah on the go. I, I was vacationing with some friends, and one of my buddies had a uh, had Persona 5. I think it was on his Vita. Was that on Vita? Persona 4 was, I yeah. know. I don't think 5 was on the Vita yet. No? I was pretty sure he was playing something persona related. So uh yeah. I was so su- I was kind of surprised that these weren't there. In my mind they already were, but apparently I was wrong. So uh let's see what else. Any oh, saw more Plague Tale. I was surprised that's coming to Switch. Yeah. Cl- I'm, on the cloud. Yeah, it's cloud I'm edition. super worried that that game is gonna get condensed down and just not be as pretty. Maybe. Yeah, we're we're underselling this. Switch isn't like a terrible it's not terrible, but there was a few other games that they've tried to port over, and I'm like, oh, this doesn't look right. <laughs> you know, uh, Zach is going to shoot us if we All don't right. talk. And Near say that, Automata. Yeah, that's coming to the Switch on October 6th, so they're going to they're gonna milk that one for all it's worth as well. Uh, I'm interested that the Mega Man Battle, Battle Network Legacy Collection is there. There's going to be two volumes of that. That is a series I have never gotten into. It looks very... I don't know, turn-based? It's turn-based grid battle action. Which, I don't know how that fit. I've, I'm, not, I'm not knocking it because I've never played it, but I don't know, it just doesn't feel like Mega Man to me. But I knew this, this series existed. I had no idea there was that many games in this freaking yeah, series. Yeah, 10? I didn't either. Holy cow. <laughs> I was just shocked that there was that many. I just had no idea. So, uh, you, you know what else? You're going to laugh at me for thinking that I thought this looked kind of fun, but that... Pac-Man World remaster. It has nothing <laughs> to do with Pac-Man, I know, but I thought that like looked kind of cute. You need to cute. leave, sir. It, it looked kind of <laughs> cute, man. No. Lots of very Just gameplay. pack your stuff and go. I wish the audience could see CB's face right now. <laughs> He's basically shaking his head in derision at me. Derision? I'm more like just flat out disgust. <laughs> I feel dirty knowing you. I'm not you. saying I'm going to buy it. I'm just saying it looked kind of cute. Like, I wouldn't, if somebody threw a copy at me, I wouldn't not play it. I'd you wouldn't throw be mad it right or back. 
If it was digital, I would download it to a USB drive and throw it at them. <laughs> like, no. Man. Man. Ah, <laughs> oh, boy. Nobody wants to talk about Overwatch, huh? I know I've never played it, so I don't have an attachment. To okay, it. I I played it for a bit. Um, I don't like giving acknowledgement to scuzzy things. Mm-hmm. This feels scuzzy. Hey, you know that game that you bought and you spent a bunch of time in? Cool, you can't play it anymore. Congrats, bye. I mean, on one hand, Overwatch Two is going to be free, free to play. Doesn't cost you anything. And you have to be online to play the original Overwatch. It's not like, oh, I don't have access to the internet. I can't play this game anymore. Right? So, and apparently this wasn't a secret. That, like, we knew about this. I it didn't know about this. It still feels scuzzy. Yeah, like, why not just... I mean, is it, is it an issue with server space? Or what, Probably. what is the issue? Or, congrats, we're going to find other loot boxes for you to buy. Like all the ones that you bought in the original Overwatch and spent time farming up all those outfits. So they're going to pull up Pinball FX and make it rebuy everything? No, because Pinball FX 1 and 2, you can still play. That's true. That's true. So, no, this just feels... Ugh. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. Ah. But again, I can't talk too much because I don't play Overwatch either. But I know... Sai from our community is huge into that game. I think he actually is like a team manager. Like he actually yeah. runs multiple leagues and has like dozens of accounts or something like that. It's just it's just crazy yeah. how into that he is. So dozens and dozens of fans all over the world. No, there is a dude. Overwatch is pretty huge. I, man. I know, but it yeah. was it was a joke, and you missed uh, it. Okay, all right. Well, moving on, I want to remind everybody once again that we are an independently funded podcast, which means we do pay for our podcast hosting services, website, all that. I'm not even going to say on our own, uh, but we do it with uh, offset costs from our Patreon community. Fans can go to our site and uh, you know contribute monthly to help us pay for the cost to keep the show going, as well as uh, help us give away games for the community, like the ones we I talked about at the beginning of the show. And uh, at each, at two of the levels, we give you some bonus content. At $3 per month, we give you a bonus episode. And at $5 a month, you'll actually get two bonus episodes. CB, what is available for people to listen to right now? Ooh, that's sweet, sweet Sonic 2 movie spoiler cast slash legacy episode with Kevin Honigford. Mm -hmm. uh, our new trade-off series where Zach and Kevin play Zelda versus Sonic games. You mean Scott and Kevin? Oh, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> this is Scott Clark and the Gaming Outsider. Oh my god! Uh, so yeah, that that's out there. Um, upcoming, we have a uh, Break the Seal on Max Payne. Yes, with, uh, Scott. first time I played it. It's recorded. Oh yeah, I cannot wait to hear this. Um, the next trade off episode of Link's Awakening versus Sonic Generations is coming, and Desert Island Games with CJ Moore, one of our very dedicated listeners. Yes, CJ hopped on at the last minute when our previous guest was not available, so those should be up very soon. If you'd like to help us out, uh, you know, maybe throw a buck at us to help us keep this going, or get some bonus content, head over to patreon.com forward slash thegocast. We very much appreciate your help. And we're going to go ahead now and jump into the newer games that we've been playing. All right, normally at this point in the show, Zach reads off the upcoming releases that you'll be able to purchase right now, but I'm going to go ahead and read through them and see if I don't butcher these Japanese names and see if uh, Alyssa doesn't make fun of me. But first off, Disgaea 6 Complete coming to PS5, PS4, PC on June 28th. That's today. Uh, DNF Duel, uh, PS5, PS4, and PC, June 28th. Yurashana, Rising Flower of Genpei, on the Switch, June 28th. Did I get it right, Alyssa? You did. All right. Escape Academy, where you can go to do some escape rooms and learn how to do escape rooms at school. PS5, PS4, Series X, and S, Xbox One, and PC, June 28th. Phobia, St. Dinfna Hotel. Didn't practice that word. That's an interesting word to read phonetically. <laughs> PS5, no. PS4, Series X, and S. 
Xbox One PC, June twentieth. Did I pronounce it wrong? Uh. I don't believe that's Japanese, so I cannot tell you that. <laughs> okay. All right. MT, or excuse me, MX versus ATV Legends, PS5, PS4, Series X and S, Xbox One and PC, June 28th. Portal Companion Collection is available today on Switch. We talked about that one already. Uh, funny enough, Hourglass releases the same day, or uh, two days later, which looks very much like a Portal clone yeah. about Portals. Uh, PS5, PS4, Series X and S, Xbox One, Switch, June 30th. Rabbids, Party of Legends, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, June 30th. Cuphead, The Delicious Last Course. Notice DLC. Oh, that's clever. Uh, I, I never, I didn't notice that before. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC, June 30th. Monster Hunter Rise, Sunbreak, on Switch and PC, June 30th. Outriders World Slayer, PS5, PS4, Series X and S, Xbox One, PC, and Stadia, June 30th. And finally, F1 22 on PS5, PS4, Series X and S, Xbox One, and PC, July 1st. CB, anything you're planning to pick up this week? Oh, man. There's a couple. Uh, Escape Academy. Kind of yeah. Play. That looks I fun. Think, I believe that. Is that one supposed to come to Game Pass? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. If it does, that's I'm excited yeah, about that. If, if it's on Game Pass, I'm already there. Um, I really kind of want to play Phobia as well. Oh yeah, like, yeah, that one looks cool. Escape, like I want to play Escape Academy. I want to play Phobia. Of course, I'm going to be playing some Portal and probably Hourglass. Are you going to actually pick up Portal? Yeah. Like, you, like, like <sighs> we'll we'll talk about it, Scott, when okay. we get to our <laughs> from the outside in topic. Oh, okay. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> what about you, Alyssa? I think pretty much everyone knows which game really stood out to me. I'm assuming, or at least if Virushana, they've been listening, Rising Flower of Genpei. Yes, because the graphics look gorgeous in the trailer. It is an otome game, visual novel, romance, gorgeous graphics, and I don't know when I'll pick it up, but I will play it one day. Because I need it. <laughs> it's funny. Like I just imagine Alyssa as like you're you're the younger version of the person who's like walking through the grocery store and just sees those novels at the checkout line, and you're like, "Hmm, these look interesting. I'll buy one hey, of these." Hey, I I buy the manga versions of them. Th that's why I was like, because <laughs> I love watching your Instagram. I'm like, yeah, Alyssa's that kind of person. <laughs> For, for uh, those of I, you that always want a good laugh, by the way, go to Alyssa's Instagram, especially when she talks about her, her manga that she's reading for the week. She's like, these are the good ones. These are the dirty ones. I can't show you the cover. <laughs> Actually, I haven't done that on Instagram in a while. Oh, wait, was it? But, yeah, I, TikTok. yeah, but I have a TikTok. I haven't talked about it on TikTok yet either, though. Oh, OK. It's really I should, funny. Though. I should. Alyssa on TikTok is doing those like, which character am I with a little and like. Cycle thing. I get going the worst. <laughs> I get the worst ones, and that's why I keep posting them because people find it funny. <laughs> oh, I find them hilarious. I have no idea who they are, so it's just like, yeah, that's great. It's kind of like <laughs> it's a drawing of a person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, like the technology is crazy. Like you just like do something with your head, and it. Oh yeah, the who'd you rather? Like you just t tilt your head to the right or the left, depending on which character it is crazy sometimes technology. i don't know which characters where they belong i just go by the nice. looks what about uh, I, know I, just, I, I know i was talking about it kind of snarkily but i think hourglass actually looks interesting did you see the trailer for that one you guys yeah yeah like it reminded me of i know you hate this game but um oh man and i can't remember the name of it now what's that multiplayer game where you take turns that you hate so much the the multiplayer shooter where like one person goes and the other team oh, goes and you go like Lemnus Gate. Lemnus Gate, yes. Like it, but it has that mechanic where it's not multiplayer. Like you do something, you create a ghost character that does something, and then you play as the second one to go be able to do something that your first. Like it rewinds, and you watch your ghost character do this, and it like it might pull a lever that allows you to do the second thing. I just thought it was kind of a clever mechanic, but the thing that you're moving, it looks very much like a companion cube. <laughs> Which yeah, does. yeah. But and to be fair, I didn't see like I liked the concept of Lemnus Gate, 
Oh, I yeah. didn't like it in practice. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> All right, moving on. Scott, you've been playing Milky Way Prince, the Vampire Star, which I believe Christina actually reviewed that on PC a couple of years ago for the site. Yeah. Yes. I, but you're uh, playing it on Xbox. Yes, I was randomly sent a code to try it on Xbox, and uh, like I said, Christina, or like you said, Christina played it uh, over a year ago, I believe, and I got the code, heard it's a couple hours long, I figured, why not? And I'm going to tell you, Alyssa, this is a very difficult game for me <laughs> to review. I, I was so jealous when I saw that you were playing it, because I've been wanting to play it for so long. I'm like, uh, Scott, <laughs> Scott's playing it. <laughs> I wish I would have known you wanted to play it, because you probably would have enjoyed it better than I did. Um, and it's so difficult for me to talk negatively about a game I know like it, this. I, it deals with tough topics, because even just watching the trailer, I could well, tell. I'm I'm a straight white male, so anything negative I say about this is not going to matter anyway, right? I mean. But my, my issues with this have nothing to do with it being, um, you know, about two characters involved in a gay relationship. It has nothing to do with that. I was actually kind of intrigued, you know, about, like, where are they going to go with this? Yeah. And uh, I, I, before I get to what, what bugged me about it, I will say I appreciated the art style. Because even though this game is very much just a narrative adventure where you're picking dialogue choices and that's it, you're not really moving any character around. Uh, there is a couple of sequences where you're in your room and you can you know, pick some different objects to manipulate and whatnot. Um, I, I enjoyed the minimalist approach to the art style. Like, even though there was not a ton of color going on, uh, it, it still felt like a 3D environment that was, was just um, detailed enough for you to know what it was trying to do. Mm -hmm. And it really helped set the mood of the game. And I think that's what it was going for, and I really did appreciate that. Yeah, the trailer kind of gave me manga vibes seeing the graphics. Maybe, and maybe maybe it would appeal more to you. So, And I feel bad about no, the things I'm, I'm going to say about this because um, I, I, just, I was just not a fan of this game. Um, it deals with some heavy-hitting topics. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if... It, if do, you, do you know what it's about? I heard a few of the trigger warnings. Yeah, it, it's a game that definitely opens with a trigger warning. Some pretty pretty heavy stuff, and I know the game's old, but I you know if people do want to experience, I don't want to I don't want to dive too deep into it. But yeah, you play as a as a um, boy that meets another boy at uh, out and about, and the story opens with you reading this book about the Milky Way Prince. It's like this fairy tale story that that uh, he's read, and it's about a star, you know, this character that is a star that falls to heaven and is supposed to help save the earth or whatever. And um, supposedly this boy that he meets is, is the Milky Way Prince, or he thinks he's the Milky Way Prince. Anyway, the, the thing I appreciate about the story is the way that they did handle the relationship. It was, never like a, it was never a big deal that they were in a gay relationship. It was never, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to deal with people that don't like this. It was never anything like that. It was just, this is the way it is, and, and that's it. And I kind of appreciated that. I also appreciated at the end of the story, there's kind of a twist that I didn't see coming that I thought actually worked really well. But the issue I have with this game is it's really trying to send a message about something very serious about relationships. But to me, the game is really not accessible to people that don't like to go into this artistic mindset. Mm -hmm. and I, and how do I say that without sounding like a, a douche? It's just, it, it's very weird. And it's, it's weird in an over-the-top artsy kind of way that I know is a big turnoff for people. And I think what they're, trying to make, what they're trying to get across in here is important. It's just done in such a very weird way that doesn't make a lot of sense. And the, there are things in the game that just aren't explained to you gameplay-wise mm -hmm. that... I mean, a gameplay sounds weird to say when it's just dialogue choices or clicking on certain items in a room, but this is a game designed to be played multiple times to get different endings and get the good endings ask. and the bad endings. Yeah. But there's no way for you to 
there's no kind of context or clues or to have any semblance of what does what. I mean, at one point, you're given like a, a, a circle with like five or six different points on it. Mm -hmm. And one of them will, will, they have some kind of artistic symbol. And maybe I'm just dumb and didn't pick up what it was, but I just was wound up randomly picking a random one to see what happens. And I believe of, in the trailer it said it they relate to the five senses. So okay. each one's a different sense. So I okay. guess maybe you're selecting one's maybe taste, next time you choose uh smell, et cetera, et cetera. I don't okay. really know much about the game, so Well, I didn't realize that. I didn't pick up on that. But even now you telling me that, Alyssa, I don't know why that's relevant to the story or what was going on. Maybe I need to play it again to see if that makes more sense now. Um, I looked online just because, again, me being an achievement guy, I want to see if there's any quick ways I could do it. And the guides that I saw to do it are basically like, pick this specific dialogue option, pick this specific item in the room, don't touch this specific item in the room. So it's just purely random, and that's mm -hmm. without any insight as to what you're supposed to do. I didn't, I didn't derive a lot of enjoyment from it. So, um, I, I appreciate the game in the, especially in the fact that it is one guy that made this, or one. I shouldn't say guy. I shouldn't assume. Uh, I, I, I can't remember if it's a he or a them, but um, I, I just, it just was not a game for me. I think you would have you would like this a lot more, Alyssa. And I I kind of hope that you may pick it up so that you can come back and tell me how wrong I am. Because, well, if I ever play it, I'll let you know. But it does appear just watching the trailer. It does look like a very niche game. Mm -hmm. It's not going to appeal to a lot of people. It's for one, pretty much one group, mm -hmm. and that group knows who they are. Right, and again, coming back to the accessibility thing. I mean, even games like. Tell me why. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, at least I had the accessibility of playing other Don't Nod games or even Telltale games to know how those games go and could draw me into the story. You know what I mean? And, and, and maybe tell a message. This, this game wanted to tell a message, but, but doing so in a weird way. Um, yeah. it, it's very clear, or it seems apparent to me, that this story is very personal to the developer it comes across like this is a story that happened to him or or them. You know what I mean? Like there, there's some significance, yeah. some personal connection there that I'm not personally connected to. I would like to not be personally connected, but I would like to understand that. that. And I feel like because the game was so out there in right field, it, uh, for me, it didn't quite work, but I appreciate what they what they put together. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that's totally fair. Okay. Well, moving on, before we get to the new games we've been playing, I sat down and talked to Kevin about a couple games uh, that he is reviewing for us, so I'm going to go ahead and share that with you right now. Well, hello there, Kevin. How are you doing, man? I'm great. Yourself? I'm doing okay. I just got to tell everybody, Kevin has become my concert buddy, and it's <laughs> amazing. We've got three concerts we're going to, one in August, one in October, one in November. Uh, it's it's going to be epic. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, this is the, this is going to be the num most concerts I've been to in a single year in a long time. But we got to make up for twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one and all that, right? Exactly, exactly. Really looking forward to it, man. But you're not here to talk about music. You're here to talk about games as usual. Yep. Uh, the game that you've been playing for us is a game called Skeleton Crew. This comes from Cindercore Games, or um, is it Cindercore or Cindercone? Uh, I want to say Cindercore. Cindercone. Oh boy. I I'm an awful, awful host. <laughs> Cinder, Cinder Cone Games, excuse me. And uh, this was provided to us by NeoHive, so shout out to them for hooking you up with a copy of this. Actually, two copies, right? Yeah. You got to play with your kids? Yep, yep. We had fun. Uh, this game looks awesome. I actually saw the trailer. I think I texted you immediately and said, Kevin, this game has your name written all over it. Uh, it looks like your kind of game. You want to kind of give us an idea of what it is? Because I have an idea from watching the trailer, but I think I want to hear it from someone who's actually played it. I I mean it's pretty much a um almost fits into the the episode you guys just recently had on beat em ups because it's almost exactly like a beat em up with uh with swords and magic and um a bit of a metroidvania as well where you're going back and forth but you, but you play a character there are 
you start off with one of two. Well, you start off with one, but the second one gets unlocked very, very early. Mm -hmm. Um, And you find out real quick that each character has their own individual abilities um, that let you get through certain areas of the game. Um, That comes into play a lot when you're going back to find something that you could not get to before. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, you're getting together with mostly with buddies and going through these levels trying to save the world, basically. Now, when you say it's similar to a beat em up, when I think beat em up, I think that you've got that, um, you you've got that shift where your character can kind of go in the foreground and background. The trailer made it look like this is just a straight two D type game. Is yeah, that no, fair? you're right. You're right. Maybe beat em up isn't the right the right comparison because yeah, you're correct. It's it's a straight up two D platformer. Um, but but you are it's it's you and your buddies going around beating up skeletons and zombies and and all kinds of witchcrafty things. It looks super fun. It looks like a, uh, yeah, I guess beat up does kind of make sense just on a 2D plane. But in the trailer, it said something like, use your feet to save whatever. Are, mm-hmm. are you kicking things into creatures, or what is the deal with feet? Yes, you are. And that is the selling point for this game. Okay. Because it, it, you, you are kicking everything. Uh, kicking is like you, everybody has their normal attacks and their special attacks, which use energy most of the time. Um, but kicking things is how you solve puzzles. It's how you, um, overcome enemy strong points. Like, like you have to kick an enemy to, uh, basically you're kicking their shield away from them Oh, and, okay. and then you'll be able to attack them. You have to kick things into certain lovers like there will be things like there will be a pumpkin laying on the ground there will be a box laying on the ground you have to pick something up and kick it into a lever to open a door uh you can charge your kick by holding down the button you use to kick and it will do a stronger kick so it'll so like there are heavier objects like cannonballs you can pick up a cannonball and if you just do a regular kick it'll go a little far and it'll do some damage but you can hold the kick button to charge your kick and it'll shoot a cannonball across the screen almost so this isn't just for puzzles and that and and traversal, but it's also for attack. Yes, it's it's used primarily for attack. It, for my case, I, I think you can kind of play it however you want, but but for me, a lot of the fun was just like you can. One of the things you'll knock out will like if you're fighting a skeleton, their head, their skull will pop off after you beat them. You can pick up their skull and kick it at another enemy. Nice. And, and it takes some getting used to. I'm not going to lie, right off the bat, because it is like you. Ha- there's a lot going on. And you have to kind of maneuver like everything that you can pick up on the screen to grab something to pick up. And and there's a a plethora of items that you'll come across. There's explosion canisters like, like, uh, like TNT crates. There's poisonous gas barrels, um, which will have like an area of effect kind of thing as soon as they make contact with something and explode. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's a lot of fun. It, the kicking is seriously like you can it, when you hold it down to charge it, you can like it gives you a directional arrow and lets you aim where you want to shoot it at or kick it mm-hmm. to. So it it can. Another aspect is like, are you going to hold it down long enough to make it to where you want while everything's attacking you? Because as soon as you get hit, it cancels your kick. Right. So like I said, there's a lot going on and it can take some getting used to. But after probably about thirty minutes or so. Me and my boys were just having an absolute blast with this. It looks so much fun. I, I highly encourage everybody to check out the trailer. If you're listening to this episode, there's a link for it in the show notes of this episode. Uh, there seems to be a massive sense of humor associated with this game, too. It just looks zany is the best word I can describe it. Uh, I mean, is is there any story in here that that brings to the humor, or is this just just, just whimsical mayhem? No, there is a story. And in fact, uh, like one of the first things you find out is you work for, you are part of an organization called Yeet. <laughs> <laughs> it is the, it is the, uh, Yanian Eldritch Extermination Team, Y E E T. That is hilarious. <laughs> they actually came up with an acronym for Yeet. Okay. I'm listening. Um, so, so there's that. And there's all kind of like as you go, you'll like, you'll uncover NPCs that like through the missions you have to protect or like some of them you have to bring their cat back to because their cat got lost. Um, and, and you can, I'm, this is going to be, a, you can kick the cat. 
Oh, okay. to, to, to get it to like it, it doesn't hurt the cat in any way shape or form it's a I little tongue in cheek yeah I was going to say I, I hope Alyssa's not listening <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but no so like you, there's chickens you have to find and get to a coop and you can kick the chicken to get it to its coop if you want to and and like like there's the ability to fly by kind of like roughing up the chicken so to speak um, it, it is, I played Zelda games I know how that goes yeah, it's not that bad. They don't, they don't, they don't come rushing after you after you hit them once or twice. <laughs> but, uh, but no, it, it uh, it's a lot of tongue in cheek and a lot of just galdy comedy and a lot of fun, fast, fast paced action to go with it. It's a lot of fun. Very cool. So it sounds like you recommend this one. Yes, very much so. I will say honestly, like, like the aesthetic when I first started playing was like it feels very much like a mobile game until you get into the meat and potatoes and start being able to use your abilities. Okay. Um, but, but, but like I said, that, that was, wasn't very long lasting, but, but just so I don't want that to turn people off right off the bat. Gotcha. Give it some time and you'll see what's cool there. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Hey, you know what, while I've got you here, uh, and again, that is skeleton crew, which you're playing on PC. I've not seen it for consoles yet at this point, but, uh, uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen in the future, but right. while, while I've got you here. Uh, there's another game that released this past week, and I want and I didn't prep you for this, so I apologize. But I figure That's you okay. can talk about Sonic off the cuff all you want. Oh. I know that you've been playing Sonic Origins as well. I haven't got a chance to play it, so I want to hear your experience with that game because you were the biggest Sonic fan I know. Uh, I think Zach may even may rival you. You, but but he's nowhere near the fanatic that you are. So talk about Sonic Origins. Well, that's that's high praise. Yeah. Um, so Sonic Origins was my first experience was I, I play everything on PC, uh, mm-hmm. not everything, but mostly on PC. So I downloaded it first on PC. There were some big problems with the PC game. Oh, really? Yeah. Where like I went and requested a refund and I just bought it on switch. Oh, just, okay. just because I wanted to, I, I didn't, I'm sure they'd fixed what was going on, but I didn't want to wait the time. I just, I want to get at it now. Um, right. And once you get into the gameplay on the PC, it was fine, but it was getting to the gameplay that, that was rough. I like for some reason when you load the game in, it automatically loads in 4K on the monitor. Mm-hmm. Well, 4K monitors are not like even the high end gamers don't necessarily have 4K monitors. So that's a pretty mm-hmm. rare thing. Um, and I, I am not high end by any means. But so, regardless, I'd, basically, long story short, when you would go to when you log the game in, everything was going super, super slow. It wasn't laggy. There was no speed to catch up. It was just going super, super slow because it was trying to um, project into a screen that the settings weren't right for. Yeah, and super slow is nothing you want when you're talking about a Sonic game. Yeah, and so I did not know this when I first booted it up because I booted it up like the second I got home mm-hmm. from work and uh, it, it started playing and I just, just like, like I'm looking at the screen. I'm going, this cannot be right. Like, please tell me, like, I thought that was the way it was supposed to be. Um, please tell me this is not what it is. So I did some research and found out, sure enough, that's what it is. And the, the worst part is, to fix that, it's not just going into a quick settings thing before the game. It was like you had to go into, like, some deep settings that, mm. like, like, I'm a PC gamer. I don't like going and doing that stuff. Right. I, I, I like my stuff to get there, load up, and go. Did you have any issues with that on the Switch? So I did buy it on the Switch, and everything worked a million times better. Okay. I will say, though, that even on that, there are some weird glitches that I'm hoping will be fixed. I Just so you know, I, I can't remember the, the actual developer's name now that they had to do it, but, but he has come out on, on the social medias and said that he is so unpleased with what's going on right now because they... I read that as well. Yeah. Um, so I hope they're able to fix it because there's nothing game-breaking, but it is super annoying. The biggest annoying thing to me is in the Sonic 2 game, which is my favorite game of all time ever, hands down. So, of course, I'm playing the heck out of that. Um, In the original games, when Tails goes off of screen when you're gone too fast because you're Sonic, of course, Mm -hmm. he would just basically respawn once you got far enough away and fly down and start playing with you again. Well, here, for some reason, if he goes off screen because you're too fast again, he goes into this thing where he just keeps trying to jump past an obstacle or something, and you constantly hear that. So if you if you lose him at the early part of a stage, you just cut throughout the rest of the stage, you're just hearing this boing, 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 and it is super annoying. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and that and he he like he doesn't respond to come 
to come rejoin you. So it's, I'm not sure what they did there, but what evidently, a weird thing to slip through the cracks. Yeah, I, that that was my that was my thought too. And there have been a couple, like a very few spots where I've like glitched like into a wall. Mm. Um, but but that has been very minimal. But it has happened. But like I said, it, it, a lot of it is just like like it's not game breaking. I still went through and I complete the stages when that happens. But but like I said, there was one time in the casino zone where I lost tails real quick, and the whole rest of the stage. Which Casino Zone is a game that I was a stage that I always love to take my time going through because it's just that much fun, um, and it was just constantly being bombarded with the boing 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 like the whole rest of the stage, and it was so annoying. So, I mean, are you was, finding anything new and exciting though? Because I know you've played these games a ton and played through them. Is there any added bonus to playing this version of it as opposed to playing the previous ones, or even like I know Sonic Two is on Nintendo Switch Online. You know what 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 pluses are there to, to this collection? Uh, there's a lot of cool features actually. Um, the the first one I noticed was I playing the anniversary mode because they have the classic mode where it just puts the plain Jane original game on your screen. I have mm-hmm. not played those yet simply because I wanted to jump into what was new. And on the anniversary mode, it it puts it at a sixteen nine ratio instead of the four three that the original was. Oh, the, one of the first things I noticed is when you come across the first boss in Sonic the like he it's it's that wrecking ball robotnik enemy yeah on the original i know what that is now yeah i was gonna say (laughs) (laughs) on the original you had time to run across the screen jump up and you could hit him like two or three times before the the wrecking ball swung the other way on the pendulum once you once you got good enough at it here you can't do that because the 16 9 ratio adds that much more space between the platforms Mm -hmm. that it makes it almost impossible. I was lucky to get, like, I could get two hits on him, but I was very, very, very close to getting hit when I would do that. Hmm. So so a third hit was not even remotely possible. And another thing I noticed is, like, like a lot of times you could hit Robotnik as he came onto the screen in whatever level it was, and here you can't do that. It doesn't let you hit him until he actually has his weapon ready and the fight actually starts. So it's almost kind of like relearning some areas of the game, but in a good way. Yeah. Or like, you know, yeah, I, you, I, you can't rely on rote memorization that you've had before. Yeah. I thought like as soon as I played that, I, I just felt different at first. I couldn't figure it out. And then I figured it out. And, and like, I was excited. I think I remember, I think I texted you as soon as I, so I was like, oh man, this mm-hmm. is awesome. Because it, because it was, it added a whole nother uh, avenue, I guess, to a game that I had loved since I was a kid. So right. it, was, it, it was a new experience. That's cool. So you recommend people pick up this collection? Uh, like I said, if you can get past the, the bugs, definitely. Um, and I don't, I, I, the thing is, is nobody knows if they're going to fix any of it yet. Right. That, that has not been spoken on. So um, if you can get past the bugs, definitely buy it. It's, it's so much fun playing through the games. Oh, and the other part, I, I do need to talk about this real quick if we have time. Sure. Um, the special zones in Sonic 2 are one of my half greatest pipes. memories. Yeah, the half pipes are one of my greatest memories as a kid because I would sit down with my buddies and we would memorize the patterns and just spend hours and hours and hours just in those zones alone. In this game, the like, I have never been a frames per second person ever in my life. I, it's, mm-hmm. I don't care about aesthetics, whatever. Um, these stages being played at 60 frames per second makes a world of difference. Really? Yeah, it's it's so smooth, almost to the point like like it is to the point where as I was playing them, it was hard for me to do, even though I knew where everything was, because everything was coming at you so much smoother. Interesting. And that sounds weird to say, but it, it's something you have to kind of experience to kind of understand and look at side by side because it was it was so different. It was awesome, but I, uh, but like I said, there were like I know I can go through those stages with my eyes closed on the regular game. Right. And here, like, I was struggling. I don't think I got past the fourth zone before I had to call it quits. That's interesting because y- y- most players that I know would say, oh, it's not exactly the same. This sucks. But you kind of look oh. at it as like an added challenge or, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's I mean, really to, cool. to me, it's, it's, like, to me, it's just so much fun because it's a different way to experience that experience. And for lack of a better term, it, it added yeah. another element that I was not ready for. 
All right. Sonic Origin sounds like a uh, winner for Sonic fans for sure, outside of some minor bugs. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Cool, man. Well, thank you so much for talking about that and Skeleton Crew. I appreciate it as always. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll check in with you next time. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Thanks again for the opportunity, man. Not a problem. Catch you later. See you. Well, hello there, Sean. Long time no see. How you been, man? I'm doing all right. Also, happy birthday, man. I appreciate you coming on to record this with us on your birthday. Doing anything yeah, fun? thank you. Uh, so far, I mean, I'm here, so that's uh, that's good. But uh, my old man's coming by later. We're going to probably see a movie, have dinner, you know. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, let's get right yeah, into 36, it. 36, man. Wow. 36? Old man, you're almost up to me. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, well, you're here to talk to us about a game called Zorro the Chronicles. We talked about this game when we were talking about the new releases a couple weeks ago. It's from developer BKOM Studios and was provided to us by Home Run PR. I got to get your take on this, man, because the trailer I thought looked really cute. It's one of those. It's got the Peggy 7 thing at the beginning, you know, which, which makes me think, oh, this is just going to be for kids. Uh, it's based on a cartoon I never even knew existed, much less watched. Um, but you had some high things to say about this when we talked over text before, uh, before today. So what exactly is Zorro the Chronicles and should I be scared or is, since I don't have any kids? No, it's actually quite fun. Um, I don't have kids either. And just like you, I had no idea that this cartoon is based on ever existed. I don't even think it came stateside. I think it's a European production. Oh, okay. I mean, I know but, the character uh, Zorro, as... but it just... Yeah, you know. oh yeah, everyone's heard of Zorro, I, I would hope. But uh, yeah, no, this particular iteration I've never heard of. But uh, as far as the game's concerned, it's uh, it's Baby's first Arkham Asylum. Okay, I mean, the Arkham Asylum gets me, but the Baby's first makes me a little nervous as a 40-year-old, 42-year-old gamer. So... Talk to me about no, it. No, I mean it's 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 cute. You know, it's very cartoonish. It has all like when I say baby's first Arkham Asylum, like it plays like like any Arkham game. It has the combat and such, mm-hmm. but just as far as the violent content, it's just it's very cartoonish. It's okay. slapsticky, Looney Tunes like, and death blows, quote unquote, are just more like uh, knock them unconscious, and you know they kind of look dizzy and the traditional cartoon thing of stars orbiting their heads you know so nobody kind of dies thing. they just kind of pass no. out and have birds flying around or whatever exactly yeah and things like or other slapsticky things like pulling their pants down and drawing the infamous z on their butts you know that kind of thing that's gotcha. their that's the takedown move well yeah. i mean you say arkham asylum arkham asylum or arkham city i can't remember huh Got already. Asi- I'd say asylum just because it's this is an open world like like city or knights is okay uh, but I mean, even Arkham Asylum still was a pretty lengthy game. I mean, uh, it was a it was a meaty game at the time. Lots of content, you know. Batman kind of going through the ringer, seeing his mm-hmm. cowl and cape just kind of get torn to shreds by the end of the game. Uh, is is this a lengthy game or is this a? I'm still in the middle of it, but uh, I've seen ga- I've seen full walkthroughs on YouTube be about four hours long. Okay. And sized. there's only about there's only about 18 levels or so, and uh, you, and actually when you choose a level, you can choose whether you want to go in the combat approach or a stealthy approach, mm-hmm. and that just means you'll start at different different points of the map, and you can also choose your character. There's two Zoros. There's a brother and sister Zoro character in this. You can flip flop between each one, like on the fly or in between. Levels? Not on the fly, but in, but uh, before you start the next level. Okay. So well, it's not like Assassin's Creed where you like choose a man or a female character and then that's it throughout the duration of the game. Each gotcha. level you can you can choose, and they each have different uh, abilities slightly. Okay, so tell me about the gameplay then, because uh, you know Arkham Asylum, I think you know hiding on statue heads and trying to clear out all the enemies as stealthily as possible, potentially hanging them upside down from gargoyles, and you know using my bat gadgets. Is that what's going on just at the Zorro? Pretty much, the mechanics are approachable. Okay. You know, for kids. Uh, it has, you know, you're equipped with a whip, so that kind of acts like your battering, you can, where you can perch on the high places. Sure. You have a spyglass where you can mark enemies, mm-hmm. and you can jump down on them to knock them out. And if you get swarmed, you can, uh, you know, it just, it's just repeatedly tapping X for, your, for attacks. And you can also do stun moves, and there's different types of enemies, like shielded enemies, where you have to, uh, you can't hit them from the front. You gotta find a way to get around them and hit them from the back, just like Spider Man. You know, okay. Spider Man has those shielded enemies. Right. Well, I mean, even in Batman, like Arkham Asylum, I think still had some elements of that. You know, but but to me, the combat 
in that game almost felt like a puzzle game more than a action RPG where like or not a puzzle game but a rhythm game where you had to get into kind of a rhythm in order to be able to defeat the enemies. Is there a rhythm to doing this or is it a little bit more simplistic than that? It's a little more simplistic, but there are there are um parry moves, you know, you can you can dodge uh incoming attacks or you can do a perfect parry and doing so grants you more stamina. Mm-hmm. So when you can do the special takedowns where it goes into a cutscene animation of like, you know, you're chasing a a bad guy under horse, lassoing them up and then drawing the Z on their chest, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. I'm pleasantly surprised. Uh I this it looked cute, but nothing that I wanted to play. It sounds like you're having a good time with it. How's the story? Story's good. Um it takes place uh, you know, on the west coast of uh, the American West Coast back when it was still a Spanish territory in this little port town called Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, uh-huh. I know, right? It's how how it, where it used to be. Um there really isn't much to say in much of the story because there isn't dialogue spoken. What? Really? Yeah, it's all done in um with body language and you know, expressions, kind of like a Pixar short film. Oh. You know what I mean? Kind of like that. No dialogue is spoken. Is that how the cartoon was as well? No, I looked, I actually looked at the cartoon for some more info, and no, it, it has, they have lines and such, but just some reason they just didn't, they didn't hire a voice cast for this game. Gotcha. That's interesting. So it sounds like you recommend this one for people to check out, like, like adults to check out, or uh, for... Adults with kids, I would say, okay. give this a try. And also, um, because of its short length, I don't know if the cost would justify it, because mm-hmm. I understand it's retailing for about 35 bucks. Oh, okay. For a four-hour game, a, sim- a simple four-hour game like this, I don't know. I was expecting, like, I thought it, I would guess that'd be like 20 most, you know what I mean? Gotcha. All right, well, Zorro the Chronicles, I'm, I'm actually very surprised at the quality of this game. It sounds like you really dug it, so thanks for stopping by to talk to us about it, Sean. I really appreciate it, and hope you enjoy the rest of your birthday, man. Thank you so much, bro. All right, we'll catch you later. Take care. Moving on, want to share our social media outlets one more time. If you are on Facebook, you can find us at forward slash groups, forward slash the GoCast. Also, our Discord community is live and growing over. You can find a link for that in the show notes for this very episode. Also, if you get a moment, please drop us a review wherever you listen to this podcast, whether that be Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, Spotify, Stitcher. Uh, those reviews help us get the word out and get more people listening to The Gaming Outsider. And lastly, our website, thegamingoutsider.com. That's where you can find all of our episodes, all of our written content, and uh, any other ramblings and writings that we may do on there as well. With that, let's go ahead and jump into our From the Outside In topic. <music> Sonic Origins released this week, and you heard Kevin talk about that game just a couple minutes ago, which means that many fans of the series bought those games once again. So I thought it'd be interesting to learn what other games we've owned multiple copies of, whether it be one on different platforms or even different editions of the game. And I also wanted to discuss why in the world do we do that? Now, Alyssa, I know that CB does this, uh, and I do as well, because I've known CB and, you know, he's a collector. But do you find yourself ever buying extra copies of games that you enjoy? And if so, why? I don't really. I've done it a couple times, but most of the time I just keep the game on one console mm-hmm. and uh i haven't really been buying a lot of games just currently bless sean's heart he's been paying for them all nice i'm sorry sean i will buy one one day i swear <laughs> but cb yeah, i'll I buy one one day too <laughs> yeah I'll believe i don't that double one. dip that often so okay so is it is it a financial thing or like or is it uh you just I've got the it's one game, there's no reason for a second one. Partly financial, but partly it's also because if I'm still able to play it, I don't feel like I need to buy it again on a different yeah. console. Totally fair. Totally fair. We're the weirdos here. <laughs> no, I don't think it's weird at all. Oh, it is. What do you hear CB's oh, reasons? It's really weird. <laughs> Go ahead, CB. Ooh, where do I start? Yeah. Um, some, some Okay. To be fair, sometimes I buy multiple copies of a game because financial reasons. Like, I if if I have the chance to buy an Atlas game for cheap when it comes out, oh yeah, uh, 
I'll buy it because I know it's going to be worth more later on. Oh, okay. You said for financial reasons, you're like, it sounds like you just have like a surplus of cash. You just throw it around, you know, make it rain (laughs) all day long. Financial reasons, I bought a buttload of video games. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But I I also look at them, like some of those is like trade bait because I know later on it's going to be hard to find. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like working designs, Atlas, there's a few of them that like, you know, when they make a game, they're not big in the United States. So Mm -hmm. you hold on to them. Right. Um, other times and somebody down the road might have something that you need and they want that. So yeah. it's about collectors helping collectors. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, another one is, well, sometimes I buy something like an extra for a friend and I either forget to give it to them <laughs> or, uh, they also just bought it anyways. So then I'm like, well, great. Now I have an extra copy. Yeah. Did you hook me up with the, was it Celeste? Physical copy yeah. of Celeste and a physical copy of Rogue Legacy. Yep. I believe I've got those like steel, steel case. Yeah. I bought five copies of Celeste. Of that version? Yeah. Because at the time, uh, it was 30 bucks. Mm-hmm. And now it's over 100 yeah. Oh, wow. So yeah. instead of saying for financial reasons, say for investment reasons. Oh, it's no, it's purely personal. financial. <laughs> Trade of like stocks. <laughs> Stocks or investments, man. Stonks. Um, <laughs> I, I've also bought like quite a few because I, I, it could be a game that I like absolutely adore. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Or other times, like it's a game that uh, you can't play on older formats anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, or simply, it's like if 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 I had a a rare copy of a game on an older system that I know that I don't want to worry about that system breaking gotcha, or the media breaking. I will buy it on a newer console to play it Mm -hmm. just because then I'm like, if I want the nostalgia factor, I can, I have the ability to play it on the older system, but sometimes. Or how about, or how about like a situation where a game is so expensive to get on its original hardware? Like, isn't that Panzer Dragoon game from, from Sega Saturn, like $1,500 or something right now? Yeah, yeah, it's expansive. But it's funny that you say that because it doesn't exist on any other platform. Oh, I thought oh I'm I'm thinking of a different what am I thinking of? Orta or something? Well no, you're you're thinking of Panzer Dragoon saga. Mm-hmm. But the problem is they lost the original source code. Oh, that's right. That's so the I game that so they expensive. the the game that uh is on Switch, the Panzer Dragoon game, mm-hmm. isn't the same game. They're like, we kind of made it close, guys. We're sorry. We lost the original. (laughs) Like, they just, like, lost it? Like, they dropped it down a well or something? Or, like... (laughs) Who knows? It it has disappeared into the ether. That's insane. Yeah, well, I mean, but you have to remember, like, back then, preserving games wasn't necessarily a thing. Yeah, they probably never realized it was going to be what it is today. I mean, if you, the, the, like the Atari prototype parts, Mm -hmm. the few that exist today are because they didn't get recycled. Uh, Um, a lot of the lab loaner carts, they actually just pulled the lab loaner sticker proto, like the prototype sticker on and just slapped a brand new sticker on and made it into a cartridge. Huh. Interesting. So, uh, I would say achievements are a big reason why I've double dipped before. You know, it, like, uh, especially when there was like the crossover between Xbox 360 and Xbox One, they were putting the game on both platforms, but they had a completely different set of achievements. So I would buy multiple copies of the game just to be able to play through it again and get all those achievements again. Uh, that's there. But sometimes, sometimes I just really want to support the developer and give myself a little collector's item as well. You know, like another copy of the game and this is my way of saying, hey, please make more games. Please make more, more good games like this one. Not necessarily yeah. like this one, but games as good as this one. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, I, mm-hmm. I completely understand that. And outside of that, the collector aspect of it is huge. I mean, how many copies of Link to the Past are on my shelf right you now? you keep them sealed. I don't. I, don't I wish I had a sealed. I wish I had well, a I know, sealed. Well, I know, but you... But you you have other newer format Zelda games that you keep yeah. sealed. 
I've got like five copies of uh, of uh, Breath of the Wild that are. I want to come open them all. No, you're not. Oh no! Watch me. <laughs> no, you're not. Gross. Wasn't that a thing you were gonna do? You were gonna weren't you talking oh, about like? Yeah, because I was because I had a bunch of the uh, the same Disney like I mean the oh, Zelda. God, Amiibos. The Zelda Amiibos, and I was going to open all mine, but like leave all the trash on the floor at Scott's house. <laughs> oh, no. And make it look like I just ripped all of his open. <laughs> I just watch his brain melt. Yeah, that would have been, been bad. So, that the collector aspect of it is, you know, especially, well, but, but to be fair, sometimes I buy multiple copies of the game, one to put on the shelf sealed, and then one to open up and play. That is perfectly acceptable. But if you just buy it to keep it sealed and don't have one, then I get mad. <laughs> well, <laughs> I can play it on other ways. is coming. No, it's not. We've only got 397 more episodes to go before that slap bed is, is <laughs> done. I want to hear about it. I'm going to start making it if you miss one. No. Oh, you, weren't th- you weren't there for no. all 400, Scott. You lose. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that was not the term, sir. That was not the terms of the slap bet. So what titles <laughs> do you guys remember uh, picking up additional copies of? I know, CB, I don't want your entire list because you probably have about 300 Ooh. games that you've got multiple copies of. But yeah, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a few. What are some standouts um, for you? Well, the highlights, I, mm-hmm. I, I, will give you the, I will give you the rundown of the most. Okay. okay. Um, I have nine different copies of Night Trap. Oh, my goodness. But that's because I have every version that's ever been made. That's just nuts. I love Night Trap. I mean, come on, it, it's but but from a from a gaming historical standpoint, it's one of the games that was relevant for the creation of the a rating system. True, and full motion video. Yeah, so I mean, it it holds like a special spot in my heart in like video game history. And boy, how tame is that game? Oh yeah, it's it, it's nothing. Like seriously, nothing compared to like if if you that... if you took some of the like really high end graphic gory or adult content games that we have today and took those back into the eighties, they would lose their minds. Yep. <laughs> don't um, don't get me wrong. Um, Custer's Revenge still makes me uncomfortable. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure it makes everybody <laughs> uncomfortable. That's why it's there. It does. <laughs> um. Doom. Uh, I oh I goodness. probably have like ten different copies of Doom, like the original. Oh yeah, Super Nintendo, 3DO, CDI. Yeah, I forgot that game was on so many different platforms. Oh yeah, it was on everything. Mm-hmm. Um, oh god, what was it? there was a uh, Dragon's Lair. Oh okay, I have Dragon's Lair on a ton of different formats. I have Dragon's Lair on NES. Yeah, well, I mean, it was also on Switch, 3DO, um, Xbox, Sega CD, Xbox. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I absolutely adore that game. I love it to death. Um, but as far as like some of the, like ones that I have like the exact same copy of, Mm -hmm. uh, that would be Galaga. I assume that was going to be in there. Yeah, I, I have like fifteen NES copies. (laughs) Fifteen. I love Galaga. It's you know, there. You know the thing that bugs me about Galaga? Uh, Is about that you suck NES? at it? Well, besides that, <laughs> the NES version has the most generic box art for Galaga. Yeah. I don't like the box art on Galaga. It does not look like Galaga to me. No, it doesn't. But like, I'm okay with that. I would have been much happier if they just just put the ship on there. Or a screenshot of the game or something. That thing that's on, that's on Galaga just does not make any sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like those are the big ones. Uh, as far as like newer consoles, mm-hmm. Celeste. Yeah. Uh, I have a few copies of that. And then Operation Blackout from G.I. Joe. What? <laughs> <laughs> it was Operation Blackout? So it was it was one of those games that you sent me the link. They're like, "Oh, look, Amazon's got a pricing error with this game." Oh, that sounds like me. And it was like a quarter. <laughs> was it really? And I bought twenty <laughs> <laughs> because it was funny. Because I'm like, 
hey, guess what? Everybody's getting a uh, copy of Operation Blackout for G.I. Joe for Christmas. Oh, I didn't get one. <laughs> Is it Christmas yet? <laughs> it's coming, that like, sir. That was like two years ago. Yeah, but to be fair, it did take them a while because I had to argue with the Amazon people. I'm like, mm -mm, you screwed up. That was your pricing error, not mine. You actually made the effort. Oh, to I get did. Those games for a quarter apiece. <laughs> yes, sir, I did. Ah, <sighs> my goodness. They, uh, Didn't you they... also like go to Target or something and buy like what was that game on? Uh, oh. It was like it was like Star Fox where you had like the little oh Star Starlink Starlink and my thirty copy thirty copies of Starlink. <laughs> At they Best were... Buy, they were five bucks a piece, and they had the R they were the Switch ones, so they had the R wing. So we like we're hanging out with CB, and he just like shoves copies of Starlink like, into our hands. You get a copy of Starlink. You get a copy. Hey, he's like, you he's get like a Oprah. Copy. I'm like the gaming Oprah with bad <laughs> games. That game wasn't bad. Do you still play it? No. Okay then. Be quiet. But there's a lot of good games I don't still You played play. it for five minutes and you're like, this game is dumb. No. I played it at E3 and I thought it was actually pretty cool. But I never played it when I got back. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. Guess what? I still have more copies. <laughs> well, let's see. There's... You want a copy of Starlink? Sure, I'll take one. <laughs> Deal. You got it. It's all yours. I, I don't know if I ever got one, actually. Yeah, you did. Where is it? I, I gave I gave you one. I gave Zach one. I gave a few other people ones. I gave AJ one. I gave Jameson one. <laughs> he just pulled out the the the, the Starlink ship. And he's like, "Look, I got a toy." I'm like, fair enough. How old like, was he? he's? He was like three at the time. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say he had to have been. He's still you, really little, but all you boo, it's all yours. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so so now I have like four R wings flying around my house now. I love the R wing. A cool design. Alyssa, do you have any games you bought multiple copies of? I've got a couple. I did get the Alan Wake remaster, even though I still have my 360 copy of it. Well, I still that's, a re that's a remaster, though. It does look really uh, true. Um, I'm not knocking. I'm saying that's a yeah. that's a good reason. That's but one I do. Uh, I bought two of. I don't know why I did this. I bought. The Witcher 3 originally on PlayStation 4 and played it all the way through. But I never played the DLC. And then I saw that it was on Xbox One and it had the it was the game of the year uh bundle that came with the DLC and it was on sale for like ten dollars at the time. So I bought it and I'm like, I'll play this so I can play the DLC and I totally forgot how long that game was. <laughs> so I played it for a bit. I haven't gone back to it. <laughs> so now I have two copies of The Witcher 3, but one has the DLC, one doesn't. Um, This wasn't really me buying it, but I love Daily Premonition, and I have the collector's, or the director's cut on PS3, and my mom bought me uh, Daily Premonition, but it's the original version, mm -hmm. but it was the collector's edition on Switch for my last birthday, I believe. Was it the nice. two-pack one? Uh, I don't believe it was two packs, but it came with the game and then the pin set. Okay, because I know they did the, the Deadly Premonition two-pack, or was Deadly Premonition one and two? I do have Deadly, Premoni Deadly Premonition two, but it's digital. Mm. Okay. I believe I had enough. Oh, I bought the Mass Effect trilogy that came out last year, the and I already have remaster. all, yeah. But again, that's another remaster. But I had all three originally. But those are the only ones I can think of that I've double dipped. Okay. And one was a gift. So. <laughs> Fair, Fair enough. enough. Uh, like I said, a lot of my double dipping came between the Xbox 360 and Xbox One era. I know I bought multiple copies of Assassin's Creed Four, Black Flag. Uh, there was a game called Murdered Soul Suspect. I don't know if you remember that game. I played that one. It was a, that was an early Xbox One title? Yeah, well, it was on both. It was yeah. 360 and Xbox One. That's I liked it. it for what it was. A lot I of people bashed it, but I liked it. That was one of the few that I actually kind of enjoyed going through, getting all those achievements, because it, it was a clever story. It was like you were murdered, and you as a ghost had to go back and try to solve your murder. That was, yeah. that was, that was fun. Um. 
Let's see. I Diablo 3. Believe it or not, I actually played Diablo 3 first on PC because it actually worked on my Mac. So I was playing that and then because I wanted to play it, I'd never played a Diablo game and I, I, Diablo 2 felt like it was too old for me to try to get into. And so when Diablo 3 released, I was like, I want to see what this is all about, but it only released on PC and Mac first. So I hopped on it and that's where I started playing with my friend DA. And lo and behold, they released it on console as well. And so I bought it on console and then they released it on Xbox One. We had like the Xbox One version. And I bought it again because I'm an idiot. So I, I own three copies of Diablo 3. Granted, it, you know, PC's digital, obviously, but I paid for that game three times. But let me say, I got my money's worth on that one. Uh, Skyrim. I feel like I've bought that one multiple I, times. I think almost everyone has. Because <laughs> it's on so many different platforms and they keep doing all these extra editions and Oh yeah, I'll start that game over again and and finish it this time. Yeah, it's it's it happened. I still I still want the uh, <laughs> Skyrim very special edition on Amazon Alexa, <laughs> one where you can just like talk to your Alexa. Alexa. Eat all the wheels of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> that commercial was pretty great. Uh, those are the big ones. I mean, obviously the collector in me has. You know, I've got multiple copies of multiple Zelda games. Uh, I've got. Multiple copies of Rogue Legacy and Celeste, thanks to CB. Uh, but those those are the big ones. I I, I always kind of wish that there was like the there was one game that I had in my head that like anytime I saw it, I buy it. Just like you do with Galaga, like you see a copy of Galaga, I'm gonna buy it. I want I want to find like a really cheap game on NES or something Su- like that. Super Mario Brother Duck Hunt. I saw a guy online that did that that owns like something like four hundred copies of Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt. Maniac Mansion. That's not a bad idea. Maniac Mansion. I was thinking like Marble Madness or something like that. It was probably a little more expensive, but Arkanoid. There you go. I love Arkanoid. Maybe that's what I'll do. And then I'll just like start to try to find those Arkanoid controllers. It it took me almost ten years to find my first one. Yeah. They but are that, not easy that, to come across. That'd be a good one, man. Because I love Arkanoid, and th- then I, then that's something I'm actually like looking for. sub ten dollar game too. Right. Then that's something that I actually am looking for whenever I'm game hunting. I'm not just looking for games to fill in my gas, but also getting copies of Arkanoid. Oh, see, so you gotta find, but see, I think you gotta find something dumb. Like okay, um, Wayne Barbie. Gretzky hockey. <laughs> Wayne Gretzky hockey. <laughs> so. I so, just cornered uh, the market on Wayne Gretzky hockey. All of them. <laughs> um, okay, this is going to sound weird, but I kind of want to ask you both another question. Do you have one that you regret? Double dip. I mean, if I got my achievement points on it, no. I have one. You have one? Okay, what is it? I accidentally bought Fallout 76 twice. Oh, no. Like, the coll- like that big one with a mask? Nope. So I was so I so wanted to play that game after watching that uh, twenty four hour countdown. Oh yeah, that was a. Uh, I June. ordered the collector's edition, mm-hmm. and when the game was coming out, it was delayed. Like because I I got my big collector's box from Amazon, uh-huh. but it was one of the, you get like a code it was, for it or whatever, right? It, well, it was it was delayed by like twelve hours. Oh, and I, so you I bought wouldn't... it digitally just so I could play it. <laughs> so why didn't you just sell the copy the extra copy when have I ever sold a game out of my collection Scott <laughs> you should have seen the look <laughs> on CB's face like I asked him to sell his own child why would I do that <laughs> they're all my children don't you know this <laughs> crazy uh, well let's move on and see what our community said because we did reach out on Facebook, Twitter and Discord and ask our listeners for what times they have double dipped on games and why do they do that? Alyssa, let's start with you on Facebook. Ryan Hunt says Horizon Zero Dawn. I'd already played through on PS4 and was on my way to 100%, something I rarely bother with normally, but I just couldn't resist buying it on Steam, partly because I'm just more comfortable at my desk than playing on console. 
Partly because I heard it would work on Steam Deck, so when I get mine, I can work on that 100% on the go. And also partly in the hope that good PC sales would help prove that there's a good reason to bring those PS exclusives to PC eventually. Nice. I can get behind that. Yeah. He makes a good point, too, about, uh, you know, being more comfortable. That was mm-hmm. my experience with Diablo. I'm just the opposite. I'm more comfortable sitting on my couch with the controller in my hand. So when Diablo finally did come to console, I was like, all right, I, I love this game, but I want to play it the way that I want to play it. So, yeah. Good call. CB? Aaron Peterson writes in with Gears of War Ultimate Edition, Bulletstorm, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Uh, personally, I have a rule not to rebuy games because it's part of the today's problems of few new big games. We get used to... Ugh. We used to get them every week, now hardly ever. Everything is a remaster of something you played on three other consoles. They're making us all suckers. Um, first off, love you, Aaron, but I might disagree a little. So, <laughs> um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare wasn't the same game. It was different. Well, he's not necessarily saying that one is a remake. He's saying that's those are those are his examples of ones that he's repurchased. Well, I know, but that. technically you cannot say that you bought the same game. They are different. If, the, if it's a Call remaster. Of Duty Mario War, it wasn't even a remaster. It was a completely different story. Oh, you're, you're talking about the new, the latest one? Yeah. Okay. I don't know which one he's talking about because that either. whole so, naming with Call of Duty right now is super confusing because they've rebooted Call is. of Duty, yeah. which is not... Or Call of Duty Modern Warfare, not to be confused with Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Yeah, like, it's just all... Yeah, it's it's real dumb. So, yeah, yeah. it's literally splitting hairs. But I will say, uh, Bulletstorm, I did the same thing. Mm-hmm. Just because when they revoiced everything with Duke Nukem, <laughs> oh, that's that right. made it completely worth it. Because that uh, felt like a completely fresh and new game. Yeah, I would... I I probably go through and play that again. With, did did you Duke play Duke. with Duke's voice? No, never. Did. Oh my gosh, you have to just drop everything tomorrow. If that's what you're doing. <laughs> okay, it is so worth. You could borrow my copy. I could. Good. It is fantastic. Um, but yes, I will also agree though that they do make us suckers. Hence the reason Skyrim on eight different consoles. <laughs> yep. I mean, it's gonna be on. Like they just announced like the new version is going to be on modern consoles now too. So like that wasn't this like the first game that's like supposed to span like three generations of consoles or something like that? Well, let's see: PS3, Xbox 360, yeah, PS4, one Xbox One, mm-hmm. uh, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, also on the Switch, also on PC. Yep. It's crazy. Calvin Meyer writes in and says, I have Civ Rev, which is a Civilization Revolution, on PS3 and Xbox 360. I got it for PS3 for the trophies. I will I, I mainly will buy extra copies for achievements and because I enjoy the game so much. I've known Calvin for many, many years. That dude has been in love with Civ Rev for as long as I've known him. Well over a decade. Like I, I remember him talking about that game highly back in the day, and he's still playing to this day, and that's awesome. Very cool. By the way, hi, Calvin. I met Calvin once in person. Did you really? He's a very cool dude. Yeah. Me oh, and that's... Sean hang out, with him, hang out with him and his dad. Hang out? Hung out with him and his dad um, when I was out visiting Sean, so. Oh, wow. I did not know that. That's awesome. He's yeah. been, he, I've known that dude since the Rotten Tomatoes days 20 years ago. That's how long I've known that guy. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Super nice guy. Uh, you're up, Alyssa. Okay. Josh, is it Stima or Stima? Stima. I'm sorry, Josh. Josh Stima says, Resident Evil 4 on GameCube, PS2, and Wii. That game on the Wii is some of the most fun I've ever had gaming, especially with the light gun attachment. It's a top favorite of mine, and each version was just different enough to warrant a purchase. I also own three copies of Max Payne 2, on Xbox, and that is strictly because I was too lazy to go to the basement and dig it out twice. Wow. Yep. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> have you ever, have you, like, this is not a video game reference, but have you ever, like, had the ability to rent a movie on TV through Xfinity or, 
or Amazon or whatever, and you own the movie downstairs in your basement, instead of getting up off your butt and going out of the basement and pulling out the DVD or Blu-ray, you just buy it. <laughs> or I have it not done money. that, but I I have a sizable Blu-ray and DVD collection, but if I see a movie I want to watch again, but it's streaming somewhere, yep. I'll just stream it. I won't grab the t- I won't grab yeah. the disc. <laughs> yeah. I'm the same way. He makes a good point though. There's some there are some versions of games that are just different enough. I've actually never played Resident Evil 4 on the Wii, but I hear that, like he says, it's just a really cool way to play that. I've now now Josh has to go out and get an Oculus Quest and uh play Resident Evil 4 VR. Oh, that's right. That's on there now, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Josh hit me up, man. I've got an, a, an Oculus Quest you can borrow if you want to play through that game again in VR. Worth it. Yeah. <laughs> that would be interesting for sure. All right. Uh, Izzy Casio? Mm-hmm. Any Castlevania game. I own most of, uh, most to all of the physical copies, and I own them digitally across multiple platforms. Yeah. I mean, if you, it's, it's good. If you love the game, what it's all about. I, mean, I am. I was waiting for that sale that I talked about on Xbox. I was waiting for the Castlevania Advance Collection to go on sale as well, and it did and it not. Hasn't come. But that that will be mine someday. Not that I need more games to play, but I really want to go back and play those games because I never finished them. Uh, Bill Gardner the second writes in and says GTA Five. I purchased it on Xbox 360 and PS3. This is another Skyrim, right? Yeah. And GTA Five is like everywhere. <laughs> Uh, eventually upgraded both to PS4 and X1 and purchased a PC copy. I haven't upgraded to current gen, though. Waiting for a big sale on it, lol. I guess people like me are how that game just keeps appearing on the NPD charts. Pretty much the same story with Diablo 3. That's a good point. You know, we t- we talk about how GTA 5 kept being on, like in the top 10 list forever. And this is why, because they just keep releasing it on new consoles and we keep buying it. It's That's true. It's got to be. Why there's no Grand Theft Auto Vice City 2. Because there's no reason to, because people just keep... <laughs> you, guys, you guys just keep buying five. We'll, we'll, we'll just keep... We'll, we'll, we'll polish this street next week. We got a, we got a hot <laughs> espresso uh, section. <laughs> God. I'm, I'm okay. To be fair, like, the, the hot coffee incident, like, that was fairly tame back then. Like, Even I'm then surpri- it was pretty tame. I'm surprised that hasn't made a resurgence somehow in like GTA five. Like that same, like they just made, Oh, that'd be such a great Easter egg. If they like had a hidden coffee thing. Oh man. Like, Hey, you want some hot coffee? Like just, even if somebody in that game just said that, I'd be like, all right, I'll, I'll play through it now. Just, just (laughs) to get to that point. Yep. Yep. All right, Alyssa, you're up. D.A. Cheney writes, Dead Island and Diablo 3 to play with friends on their owned consoles. Dishonored, Skyrim, Fallout 4, Dragon Age Inquisition, Bioshock, because they were on a Steam sale at some point after a console buy, and now I play on Steam more than consoles, so I, so I wanted to play or replay them on Steam. Hmm. She brought up a good point, too, about buying it on another platform to be able to play with friends. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. That's a that's a really great point. If you if, if it's a multiplayer game and you want to play with all of your friends, but not everybody has the same console, pick it up somewhere else. Good yeah. point. That's very true. Uh, Brandon Smith. I own at least three different versions of Final Fantasy VII, and Final then Fantasy I made one. Oh yeah, Final Fantasy one. I, I was I was my my brain jumped ahead five seconds. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then I made uh, my own version because uh, I still wanted more. Yes. It's funny because uh, I own three different versions of Final Fantasy VII. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I have the PS1 version, the PS4 version, and I have a Nintendo NES version. They, oh, that's right. They Somebody made like a version. It's not the yeah. full game, right? Yeah, they, they cloned it all the way up to, uh, like what? The Scorpion Just, boss? Yeah, well, just after the Scorpion boss. Gotcha. But yeah, Brandon Smith, uh, like he said, actually coded his own version of the game. If you guys like Final Fantasy, the original Final Fantasy, uh, he made a game. Look it up. Final Fantasy Renaissance. Renaissance. And, and it uh, is a joy to play. 
I uh, I did not make it very far, but it's not fault of the game. It is my lack of understanding of how that game works because it is very old school Final Fantasy. But he added like his own classes and made them all balance. And he's well, he yeah. took classes from the later games mm-hmm. and just ported them all in. He's like yeah. all the classes. That's he's, really cool. He's put a ton of work into that. So Google that uh, if you get a chance. I will. Uh, um, he's not. He can't sell it or anything like that, but. He'll definitely hook you up over there. So Sean Coates writes in and says, I have Hitman blood money on pretty much every platform it was released on. I even have two copies on the same platform. What can I say? It's a great game. In general, I own multiple games on multiple platforms because it seems to come with the territory of being a retro collector. But perhaps the biggest reason I'll double dip is when a console dies on me. I'll then start collecting games on its rival platform. (laughs) When my PS3 died, for example, rather than spending the money repairing it or trying to hunt down a replacement, I found it easier to just shift my focus and start collecting on the Xbox 360 instead, including rebuying titles I already had on PS3, since games from that era are still dirt cheap. But someday, enough time will pass and that era will enter its nostalgia phase and game prices will skyrocket, much like what the PS2 Xbox era is experiencing now. I just started (laughs) laughing because I'm like, (laughs) thinking like, take that PlayStation, I went to the rival, you died on me. My PS3 yellow lighted. Screw it. I'm going to go get the red ring now. <laughs> I'm going to spend twice as much as it would cost on a new console and just go rebuy all these games. Although, no, that's an exaggeration because they're, you know, if they're cheap by that point. I just love how he like double dips out of pure spite. Yeah. You know what? I could get behind that too. Yeah. <laughs> Good it's a fun way to be. All right, Alyssa, you're up. Chip Holt writes The only one that comes to mind is Hades. I originally got it on Switch, and although I'm not really good at it, or any roguelite, I loved it. To support the developer, I also got it for PS5, still not good at it, and still love it. (laughs) There you go. Maybe this one's easier. I did the same thing with Dead Cells. Yeah? Because I have it on Switch, 360, and PlayStation. Well, and there's another reason, man. Like, maybe you like the game, you prefer to play it on your TV you know, on three, on Xbox or PlayStation, but you also want to play it portably. I mean, that's kind of the point of Switch is that you could do it on both, right? Well, a, another good thing to bring up with uh, roguelites uh-huh. is depending on, like, how you progress through the game, rather than deleting everything, mm-hmm. you can try to start down a different path. Oh, that's true, yeah. But you, like, maybe you don't have a save file. Like, some of those games only have one save file, right? Yeah. And so, like, rather than start over, you're like, I'll just play it on a different console now. Pretty expensive save file, if you ask me. (laughs) It's not (laughs) that expensive of a game. (laughs) And I'm supporting a developer. So, uh, Donald McCune. I have Minecraft on Xbox 360, Apple App Store, Google Play, Xbox One, playable on Series X, Java Edition PC, Bedrock Edition PC, and Nintendo Switch. It's on Game Pass now, but I, I've already bought the other versions, so I haven't bought the PS3, PS4, PS Vita, or Wii U versions yet. I've thought about it, though. Yeah, Donald, at this point, you just need to. Yeah, you're, you're, you're in it to win it at this point. <laughs> you're pot committed. <laughs> I'd say go for it, man. We'll follow up with you, because, I mean, even brand new Minecraft's, what, 20 bucks? Yeah. So I imagine yeah. you could find PS3 and PS4, all those... Maybe not Wii U. That might be a little expensive. No, it's it's still like 20 bucks. Yeah? All right. Uh, moving over to Discord, Brandon Lloyd says, Chrono Trigger, Shining Force 1 and 2, and old school Final Fantasy games, classics. Yeah, there's something to be said about that, too. I feel like that's how, like, whenever I talk to Nate, that's how he collects. He doesn't like going for, like, a full set like I do for NES. He just, likes, he just picks his favorite games that he likes to play and just sticks with that. Dragon Spirit. Well, yeah, Dragon Spirit, he, <laughs> that's a whole different You story. guys want to talk about somebody who's bought a game just because you love it? Nate and Dragon Spirit. He's even <laughs> tracked down copies from other countries. Yep, I remember that. Yep. <laughs> like, this is for my ZX Spectrum. Dude, and you, had- you don't own one. <laughs> but he's got I don't game. even own one. Yeah. But he's got a copy of it, and you don't, sir. Yeah. That is true. <laughs> Spiteful. <laughs> Jay Nalta mm-hmm. 2 
writes Skyrim. So many copies of Skyrim. <laughs> Pretty much everybody. This, yeah, I think at this point in time, like older copies of Skyrim, like because I swear you you got to be able to find like PS3 and Xbox era, like Xbox 360 era ones for like a buck now. Yeah, just start stockpiling. And what's funny is my brother bought me that game on Xbox 360, like the the Christmas that it released, and I was it was like the best Christmas gift because I had never even played Oblivion. Right. Mm -hmm. This is my introduction to the Elder Scrolls series. And I was just blown away by how much content that was. I was like, this is a great game. And I I think I still have it. <laughs> like it's like I I never keep games. I but I kept that one just because like my brother nailed that Christmas for me. And I've, you know, since bought digital copies of the game and you know, as as expansions come out. So yeah. Everybody's bought at least two copies of Skyrim, right? Yeah. Maybe not Alyssa. Or have you, Alyssa? Uh, actually, this was another one. I got as a gift from a viewer from my YouTube channel while I was still on YouTube. They sent me the Xbox One version of Skyrim because I had the PS3 version. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, I Good should have included humans. that before. Nice. Very cool. All right. Uh, Mark Szymanski writes in, Does Super Mario 3D All-Stars count? Absolutely. Yeah. If yes, mm -hmm. uh, I double dipped because it's a lot easier for me to play the Switch than it was to get the Wii or N64. Uh, if you've listened to my Desert Island Games episode, cheap plug here, uh, <laughs> you'll know that Super Mario Sunshine is uh, my top th is one of my top three of all time. Uh, I love playing that game. Otherwise, I would have double dipped when my original option disappeared or broke. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I definitely like a collection like that counts. Oh, Super yeah. Mario All Stars would have been double dipping for me, like the original Super Mario All Stars, you know. Even though they looked better, I would. Would you consider like, um, like the Resident Evil Two remake double dipping, or do you consider that? I mean, it, cause it's not the same game, right? It's not the same. No, yeah. it's not. The, it's, the only one that I would like consider even close is the original original Resident Evil to the Resident Evil on GameCube. The remake, yeah, where it's like we we freshened it up a little bit. Oh, there was some extra content in there too. There wasn't was that horrible. extra character that that chick that that ran around with her. I don't remember. She was in that. She was in that. That was one thing that was in the that last Resident Evil movie. Remember that one that was terrible, where they ruined oh, Leon. Did, yeah, the one that was like right on Netflix. Yep. No, 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 no. The one that was in the theater. I didn't hate that movie, but really, but I I do agree that Leon. I didn't oh. like how they portrayed Leon. We did a that, whole. They did the boy movie. dirty. Yeah. We, <laughs> it's it's funny because I had actually completely erased that from my memory until yeah. just now. But my point is, is they brought back that character from the GameCube remake that wasn't in the original game, was in that movie. It was oh, from um, the orphanage. Rebecca. The, uh, oh no no, no oh, that, that one. I know the one you're talking about now. The creepy, like it was in the in Insane Asylum or, or Orphanage. I know. Or yeah, I know what character you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Anywho, eyes up to me now? Yeah. It is. Ferris writes in and says, Minecraft, Terraria, Xenoblade, Amalar, Skyrim, Dragon's Dogma. Probably a couple more that aren't coming to me at the moment. For the sake of my kids, I needed to be in a position to play or let them play something that is also being enjoyed by somebody else in the house. Or because somebody in the house is enjoying something else. The other reason being collection purposes. That, and for the sake of the Switch, I can enjoy some of them on the go. That's a good point, too, mm -hmm. about having multiple family members. But, Ferris, that is where I will say that's where digital is handy. Because you can do game sharing with your, within your family and share those games so everybody gets them instead. True. But Ferris also collects games. Uh-huh. Like me, which I would still be buying physical if it weren't for somebody else in this room. <laughs> <laughs> that man has ruined me. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. You are welcome, sir. <sighs> uh. <laughs> All right, we got just a few more here. Alyssa, you're up. Alan Sheck says, I used to play most things on Xbox, had to rebuy a number of them when I switched to PC. 
Most were pretty heavily discounted on sale, so not a big deal. A couple of more intentional cross-buys were, I bought additional copies of Minecraft, GTA San Andreas, and Star Wars Battlefront 2 on PC, while I was still an Xboxer for the sake of modding. I bought additional copies of Minecraft, all the GTA 3 era games, and Bully on mobile so I can play them anywhere. As much as people hate on phone ports, these are all decent. Hmm. I have beaten most of them with mostly the touch controls and had a blast. And with a, and with a $30 phone clip knockoff controller, it was even better. Nice. Yeah, I can, I can get... Like, I, I, I don't mind so much with some of the phone ports where it's like, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. other games like where it's like... If like I, Mega Man? I, play, well, I tried Mega Man 2 on a phone, that was impossible. <laughs> well, can you imagine playing Ikaruga? Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, at least sure that I'd one you could drag a little bit, but then your finger yeah. would get in the way of seeing everything. Yeah, it just... That doesn't sound like a fun time to me. No. So. No. All right, Jacob Gunderson. I love Shadow of the Colossus. Every time that game shows up, new and improved, I pick it up. I think it sticks with me because it plays like no other game I have. It is beautiful, simple, but the puzzles are alive. Even though there is only a handful of enemies, nothing really changes. I felt compelled to play this game over and over. It might not be my favorite game, but it's always something I carry with me. Well, let's see, that game originally came out on PS2. PS2. They did mm -hmm. a PS3 compilation. Remaster with was, Ico. With Ico. Yeah. And then there was a remaster of it. From Blue Point Games on PS4. Yeah. So, yeah. There's at least four, four or five different copies there amongst different platforms, so it's a good call. Tim Thane says, honestly, I don't really double dip, so this may be a non-answer. Most games, even though I say I might like to replay them, I never do, because I have such a big backlog, I never run out of things to play. If anything, it's on the Nintendo side. I did buy 3D All-Stars, and I own Mario 64 on the DS, but never played Sunshine or Galaxy because I never had a GameCube, and my Wii ownership was very short. And I also bought 3D World again on Switch after owning it and beating most of it on Wii U, but that was mostly about playing Bowser's Fury and I really wanted something bright and colorful to test drive when they upgraded to the Switch OLED. Definitely worth it. Agreed with you there, man. That's a that's a good call. Yeah. Most of it, I mean, he, he has technically double dipped with the 3D All-Stars one, but again, he didn't have the other two games, so it kind of wasn't double dipping, but I see his point, so. Yeah. Yeah. Glad you're digging that, that uh, OLED, man. I've got one as well, and it is... The, the difference is noticeable. It is very noticeable. Well, thank you, everybody, that wrote in with all those responses. Really do appreciate it. Next week's topic, I feel like we haven't done one of these in a long time, but we're finally going back to community questions. So stay tuned to the social media outlets. We're going to ask you for questions that we can discuss on next week's episode. But that's going to do it for this week's episode. CB, any parting words or recommendations before we are done for the week? Folks, the Umbrella Academy has returned, ah. and it is glorious. This I, is I didn't, I could not make it to the first season. Oh my gosh, what is wrong with you? I couldn't, I couldn't do it. You I hate like big, the he hates Big Trouble in Little China, even. Okay. I, I, I like Big Trouble in Little China. I don't love it, but I like it. But I did like the first two seasons of Umbrella Academy. I just haven't gotten around to watching the third season yet. It's really good. Yeah? Yeah. I will. I I, I actually cannot wait till Alyssa sees it. And Zach, just because I could be like, all right, let's nerd out a bit. Okay. Sounds good. Alyssa, how about you? I've been really loving this series on HBO Max called Irma Vep. I have never seen the original film, but this is a remake of the film by the, s the same director is remaking his film into a limited series, and it stars Alicia Vikander, which mm. I love her in everything. She's great. And just, it's such an interesting limited series because she plays an actress who uh, really blew up after doing a superhero movie, but she wants to do more impactful films, more artsy independent stuff so she agrees to do a remake of this film that they're making into a limited series it's veta veta it's very meta 
but it's called Le Vampire. Le Vampire, but they say it with a French accent. Le it's Vampire. just, it's just so meta seeing a limited series about making a limited series, and the fashion. Love the fashion. It's just very interesting, and it shows how the director's mental state is, and mm. why he is remaking his original film in the first place. And I'm kind oh, of wondering so it's if same guy remaking it. Um, in the show and the act, and in real life as well. That's so really there are a lot of parallels, and I do want to see. I do want to watch the original film after I've finished the limited series because they only release one episode a week. Just to see, because I'm interested now, because I believe the original film was about remaking a film as well. Oh, okay. So it's just really interesting, and I mainly watched it because of Alicia, because right. she's just fantastic. What's it called again? But Irma Vep. Irma Vep. That sounds super interesting. Uh, I, you probably saw this coming. I won't talk too long on it, but uh, everybody... If you get a chance, please go listen to Coheed's new album that released on Friday, Vaxxus 2, uh, what's the subtitle, CB? Window of uh, the Waking Mind? Yeah, Window of the Waking Mind. Oh my goodness, this thing is outstanding. Glorious. I think I, 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 I put on, on Twitter that it is, it, it's like an epic rock opera, and I want so bad to know what's going on in this story, but like those last three tracks on the album... The way they all just meld together to just make this impactful. Oh man, I don't know if you're into how much into music you are, Alyssa, but I challenge you to go listen to this album, even if you don't know anything about Coheed, uh, about the story, because I'll be I'll be direct with you. I don't know anything about the story. Okay. But this, it, man, it it almost feels like a theatrical production. Those first two tracks, it's just really cool. And Coheed does this thing where they take melodies from previous songs and previous albums and they kind of stick them in there in, in like the opening track is a track from Vaxxus one, which was like two or three albums ago. And it's, it's just really, really good. So I highly recommend that. But my real recommendation is going to be a book. Uh, I was going through my audible account and I realized I've been paying for audible every month and I've got a backlog of books that I never, never finished. So uh, I took a pause on Audible for three months to try to get caught up on some other stuff. And I started up a series that I read when I was in high school, but I've completely forgot everything that happened in it. So I wanted to start it over again. It is the Sword of Truth series by Terry Goodkind. And I am uh, doing the first book, which is called Wizard's First Rule. Um, I remember loving it when I was a kid. And I'm only about 12 chapters into it so far, but I am really, really digging it. So if you like fantasy, uh, or if you've ever been afraid of fantasy, you know, worried about it being too in depth or whatever, uh, I recommend this is a good starting point. This is where I started reading fantasy because the main character knows nothing about magic, so you kind of go along with him for the ride, and it's and it's really really cool. But I needed a break from uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, not, like those books are like forty six hours long, and they're just so dense, and they take forever. Um, I needed something a little bit smaller. Granted, this is still like 30 hours, but that seems like a lot less than 46. But I uh, highly recommend it. Terry Goodkind, Sort of Truth. First book is called Wizard's First Rule. Okay, I have a question. Is it a three book series? Oh, no. It is way oh, no. more than three. I have a Terry Goodkind book set, but it's only got three books in it, so I don't know. Is it Mother I Confessor? I, th I thought it was the Sort of Truth, but I'd have to go and get it. I mean, when I was in high school or high school and college, I was reading the series and I got up to like book six or seven and he was still writing them at that point. So okay. I don't know how far he got into it, um, but I purchased I'll go and find like, it later and yeah. send you a text. But. Yeah, I would, I would be interested to hear that. It'd be fun to read a book alongside you too. Yeah, it would. That'd be, that'd be kind of fun. So but that book is like 30 years old or something at this point. So um, anyway, well, guys, it's been a pleasure. It's been so much fun talking with you guys again. And we will, uh, um, everybody out there listening, thanks for listening. The Gaming Outsider, I'd like to remind you, is produced by Nate Lucas. And all the music you hear is written and performed by Grant Henry of Stemmage and Metroid Metal. His website is stemmagemusic.com. 
S-T-E-M-A-G-E music.com. Please be sure to email us if you have any questions or concerns. Our address is feedback at thegamingoutsider.com. Until next week, I'm Scott Clark with Chris Berensmeyer and Alyssa White, and we are The Gaming Outsider. And remember, there's no such thing as a bad game, just games that aren't for you.